world full of mundane podcasts. One show rises from the ashes. Critics are calling it outrageous. Podcasts as we know it will never be the same again. Tonight, prepare for an epic journey where every step could be your last. The destination, a place where no maps can show. The mission, to rise above the rest. The danger, unimaginable. The reward, a shit ton of weed and laughs. It's going to blow your mind. This is To Be Blood. So sit back, turn up the volume, grab your weed, get ready to light those blood. Gentlemen, the following podcast is scheduled for one fall from the land of the hard knocks, Frank Knox, the master of the wrestling trivia, the king of all marks, the Scott, and of course, the birthday boy himself. He is from the land of the weed farms. It is the Get High Rapper! It is me, baby! P to the double EZ! And we're back to be blunt! Episode 16, and it's totally PC! Yeah! Uh, <laughs> yes, sir! Happy birthday, PZ! That's right! That's right! To be blunt podcast! Woo! Boy! We're live! It feels it's good to be back! PZ's birthday! That's right! We're not going to talk about age. We're not going to talk about beauty because I got that shit too. What we are going to talk about today is the hottest thing from the past week. From all over the globe. Right down to your living room. Right here to the studio. Whew. Boy. And I tell you what. It's been one hell of a week. We're coming fresh off. Week number two of the Wednesday Night Wars. You know? So we got a lot to talk about. We're all here in the studio like that. It's the PZ birthday extravaganza. Ganja, extravaganza. Oh, the extravaganza. I like that. I like that. I like that. Good point. We got a lot to talk about today. We're going to talk about, like I said, Wednesday Night Wars. We got to talk about that disastrous hell in a cell. Oh, I don't want to talk about that. Oh, we're going to have to. We're going to have to. We're going to talk about me and Frank's escapades this weekend to the Legends of Fear. I can't wait to hear all about this. And then, of course, we're going to play Stump. The Scott again. Will the Scott actually get through this week? I mean, Scott, you've really had one hell of a you know first couple of weeks. This game show, I thought was gonna be the most epic thing. I was gonna put you over, you know. And he put himself under. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put yourself under, damn it. He got his put over, put under, right? It's devastating. But I don't know. I don't know. One of those questions last week. I'm not sure. What do you mean? This, this, this was no like uh, that Al Snow argument. Mass shit. Yeah, yeah there was. was I'll, I'll talk to Bud Griffin about it later. All right, all right, all right. Well, speaking of that, solo, goddammit. Yes! We're about to get crazy. I got the extra naughty here that Frank brought me 8% alcohol. Yeah, I knew you were on that, uh, you know, diet and you're not drinking the beer, so that's I figured right. I'd grab you the salsa. All right, that's, that's actually really good. I've never had the extra naughty. Kicks a punch. I never even heard of it. Really? Look at that. Extra naughty, 8% mixed berry. 
gluten free. Gluten free. Gluten free. And I'm That's doing right. the black cherry. And the, the cherry. And then, of course, Scott's got the burrs cracked. I got the beers. I'm trying to do the diet thing too, but I can't give up my treehouse beers, man. Oh, man. Those things are loaded with calories. Today is totally cheat day for me. My trainer would fuck with me. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Cheat day? I'd be eating like a goddamn rabbit all day. I'm fucking, I'm talking fruits. I'm talking more fruits. I'm talking smoothies, protein shakes. And all I want right now, because it's my birthday, it's goddamn pizza. A large cheese Jerry's pie. That's right. Exactly. Oh, no. I don't know. Shout out to Jerry's Pizza. No, yeah. we're not shouting them out. We don't give free plugs around I here, know. Scott. I Why would he give him a cheap free plug? That's right. You gotta, that, that's <laughs> money in our pocket. Plug them? Wow. All right. You, yeah. said, you said Jerry's Pizza. I figured people would be wondering what we're talking about. So we're going to shout them out? That Get the free the, plug? That gives the people no explanation. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. That's right. And on top of it, that's money we could have made in advertising. <laughs> I could have been running live commercials like it was Omaha Steaks. <laughs> right? <laughs> So I'm talking about. To, oh, never mind. That's right. That's why. Hold on. Hold on there. Hold on. All right. Before we get any further, guys, I got right here exactly what the doctor ordered. Is that the birthday blunt? This is right the there? birthday blunt. And we got another one on deck. That's right. We got two. It is two be blunt. So before we get any further, I ask you, are you ready? Yeah, I think I'm ready. <laughs> Scott's just silent. He's never ready. He doesn't smoke. It doesn't matter. I expect him at least for, you know, get in there. That's all right. I'm yeah. ready with you. Guys. All right. There all we right. go. Thank God. All right. Then I ask you both again. Are you ready? We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Let's see. You like ready. that shit. I'm ready, man. Then. And when he asks when we're ready, it's not just about the blunt. It's about the podcast. Yeah, that's right, Scott. So if you're yeah. not ready, get the fuck walking. Yeah, God, God, fuck. Yeah, no good piece of I'm shit. I'm here. I'm ready. All right. Then for the three of us in this podcast studio. And the hundreds listening at home or watching live on the Facebook stream, which is actually working again this week. Hopefully. Ooh, let's get ready to smoke it. Tell him, Frank. And if you're not down with that, we got two words for you. Smoke it. Yeah. Woo. It's about to get litty. Up in the 2B Blood Podcast studio, right here, right now. Woo! Man. So the strain of the week, right? Track Queen. We mentioned it last week. This is another main Exclusive. We've been smoking that man. <coughs> Trap Queen is a cross between OG Kush Breath and Purple Punch. Nice. Which is uh, uh, an excellent two strains to mix together. A little fruity, a little skunky, right, right, right down the middle where I like it. You know what I mean? But that's got that extra additive in it this week, man. It's got that uh, that's nice right. hash. Frank comes through today. You can smell it. With hash. White rhino, right? Yep. White rhino hash. Ooh, man, I can taste it. <coughs> oh, shit. It's loaded in there. <coughs> oh, shit, my From G. top to bottom. <coughs> oh. uh -oh. Woo. Man, this is an exclusive strain of Fino Angler Garden up in Maine. They provided us with a lot of our uh, strands, strands of the week. I'm a personal patient of theirs. I'm a big fan. Uh, a patient. Yeah, I call <laughs> it. Yeah, that's right. I'm a patient. I'm not a customer. I'm a patient. No, I'm a patient. Especially the ever so popular GMO, which I love. We're not talking human growth hormone. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Make sure that you listen, you subscribe, you review the show. It's the best thing you guys can do for us is get up in there, subscribe, and leave us a review online, especially and on Apple, Spotify, Google, whatever it might be, Player FM, Tuned In, fucking Burberry, fucking... Tell me I'm Frank. Whatever else you got, Pandora... Oh, we don't, I, don't I think we do Pandora. Well, whatever it is. But if you're watching live on Facebook, the biggest thing you do right now is just hit that share button. Hit us. the share button. Comment on the fucking show if you're watching live, you know. And uh, yeah, man, we about to get into this. Frankie got this banging ass L we rolled up. Frank rolled it before we went live. That's right. We got two. Make sure you guys call in to the show. 860-384-7110. We want your opinions. You want to come say happy birthday? That's right. <coughs> we want the birthday call. We want to rip a freestyle against Frank. 
or cut a promo against Peasley or stump the Scott, which is coming later on the show, the official game. Of course, you want to call in and try to stump the Scott, be my guest, but Anytime. it's always much more fun if you're going to play the game show. Anytime. We could start the game show as soon as we get a caller. That's, that's absolutely. And prompt, too. That's right. You're right. Abs- you know what? Goddamn right we can. Yeah. If you want to call and stump the Scott, 860-347-110, anytime. We'll go right in. We'll call in Bud Griffin in here, and then we'll get the whole game show started. You yeah. know? All right. So, what you guys do over the weekend? Scott, I mean, you were pretty quiet. I didn't really hear from you this yeah, weekend. Yeah, man. I didn't do much, man. I thought Sunday, I, I went, uh, worked out. Dude, real boring, you know? Met with my trainer, trying to do the diet thing like you're doing. Who's your trainer? Yo, so if you get to know Scott, Scott joined my gym that I go to, that I'm doing the weight loss challenge at. Who's your trainer, Scott? His name's Tyler. Tyler? I don't know if I know who Tyler is. Yeah, I don't think we have the same trainer. We've no. actually yet to be at the gym at the same time. <laughs> this is true. But you like to go in the evenings, and I like to go in the mornings, so it's kind of like... It's I, tough. Yeah, what time you get up, bro? Dude, it's... Well, like today, I was like... I had to get there at 8, so... 8? That's early for me. 8? <laughs> Hell no. No way, bro. I got to work, <laughs> yo. I got to be at work by 7. If I went to the gym, I'd have to be there by 5.30, which means I got to be up by 4.30 to leave the house by 5. Yeah, I know. It's And that sounds absolutely fucking devastating. Damn, it the is, only, the but only I, gym activities I've been doing are in the bedroom. Uh, oh, <laughs> you know what else you're doing today? Curls. Just like this. That's right. <laughs> I'm doing the, <laughs> no, I'm doing with the curls. curls. A little blood. A little liquor. A little blood. A little liquor. A little bit of bubbly. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's a good call, y'all. It's a, we haven't heard that one in a while. Chris Jericho. I wonder if we got the bubbly for today. It is my birthday. You know? We got it. We got it? We got it. Oh, what's that? A little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, bubbly. that's yeah, right. That's a lot of bit of the bubbly right there. Oh. A little bit of the bubbly. Ooh, a little bit of the bubbly. All right. What we got today? What is that? That's not like the cheap bubbly. What's that? Oh, yeah, oh, it yeah, is. That's, the That's what I got last time. The Corbell. I like Corbell. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how much it is. It's the best uh, bottom shelf there is. Well, well, listen, it's tasty. The section yeah. of uh, the selection of what actually was cold was, was few and far between. So The worst part about seeing that is I actually was thinking about going to the gym after the show. Oh, I, really? I thought about it. I was like, yeah, you know, I, if the show's done by 7.38, I could be at the gym by 8.30 and come home and be home by 10. If I could take a shower, go to bed, and wake up and do it again tomorrow. Yeah. Two <laughs> blunts of Trap Queen filled with hash, uh, a naughty hard <laughs> seltzer, and a fireball. You'll be at the gym. Yeah, I'm going to be at the gym. He's right. right. unstoppable. He can do it all. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Well, Scott. I don't know about you, but I know why we did this weekend. You weren't there. It was really unfortunate, but me and Frank, we made a visit. We talked about this last week. We said we were going to take oh, every week. We were going to at least review something. Attempt. Attempt. Okay. Right. Attempt to review. We're right. Ooh, man. So basically, what happened was me and Frank, we went down to Shelton, to Legends of Fear. Now, that's a plug I'm going to give. Okay. Because I was there, damn it. I was there. It was the shit. You go to Legends of Fear, right? It's a little different from a normal place. It's huge, first off. You're on like a tree farm, all right? Out in the fucking woods. If you've never been, you got to go check it out. So you get there, and then they got like a nice big common space, fire pits lit, and you can get like hot drinks and fucking, you know, like hot chocolates and coffees and shit, and there's like a little fucking store. But they have two attractions there that they sell you on. They have a haunted hayride, okay. which is like a good 30-minute gimmick. And a, and, a, and a walkthrough of their forest, pretty much, where you walk through and they have different things set up, houses, decorated, full houses, bro. Churches. Churches. Like, you would just walk through the woods and you'd be walking through nothing, and all of a sudden you come to a fucking church. It's literally a church. Yeah, huge, in the middle of the woods. Wow. With pews and everything. I mean, all done up. The whole place, looked, I mean, houses, like barns, all kind of weird shit, bro. The way it's set up, it looks like it was probably like an entire town back in the 1700s. Like a movie. Like there's a church, and then there's houses. And you said they turned into a is, is a maze? Well, that's where the trail is. I mean, it's about 45 <laughs> minutes long. I haven't done any of these haunted gimmicks in like at least 10 years. Are you scared? Is that why? I'm sh- I mean, I, you know, I don't, I'm not saying I'm scared. I just, you know. Wait, wait a second. You've never, been, you never been to a haunted gimmick, no, bro? No, I have, but it's been like at least 10 years. 10 years? Yeah, it's been a while since I've done one. 10 years. It's been 10 years you're telling me since you fucking... Yeah, it might even be longer. Scott, you know what I recommend you do this weekend? Don't be a little bitch. I recommend you use that business card, 
from the woman that left on your table after Eli Cannon's beer fest. <laughs> Give her a ring and take her to. You never even place. revisited that. <laughs> Give her a ring. <laughs> we never visited oh that God. back again. The lady from the for the gave her the number. Oh, no, no, not. that was weeks ago. Then <laughs> we've moved on. Well, We're not going to call him out. All right, all right, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair we'll enough. Leave it at that. So. While we were there, we were just going to review it. And then we got the idea because we had gone out to dinner beforehand. All right. And we said, what we should do is we're having a few beers. We're eating. We're drinking. We're having a good time. And we said, we should record it on our phone. The whole yeah, thing. Just voice recording. Yeah. Like set up the phone for voice recorder on. Hit record and just leave it in your pocket. Luckily for me, I was wearing a flannel with a front pocket. So I put it on, flipped it upside down, and along we went. So... Before I play the clips, Frank, out of 10, what would you rate the place from this year's experience? From this year's experience, I would give it a 7.5. But the reason I give it what? a 7.5 is because the kids that were behind us on the trail took away from the experience the two and a half points. That's a far lower score than I expected. I would give it an 8. But I, th- I lost two points because my experience was ruined. By a group of teenagers. Yeah. They were really pissing him off. Like uh-huh. He was getting real heated. <laughs> well, they were running into, you know, the girl I was Yeah, with. he was already now, fired up, too. Can I just say, like, what was the age group? Like, you said there was a lot of teenagers there. Like, was there a lot of people our age? Well, was me and PZ paid and skipped the line, so we don't know who was there. Besides the people that ended up running up on us. Okay. From behind. So between that and there being a line at the church and another like place, it took away two points for me. But if that didn't happen, it would probably have been a ten out of ten, no doubt. One of our listeners on Facebook said that we should do a new segment every week and call it "Scare the Scott." Oh. <laughs> 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 Yo, Yo, so. If the lights I, start going out in studio. I, I, the I, only way you got to scare the Scott is say, hey, Scott, WWE was canceled. Oh, <laughs> I, gave, I, gave, I gave it. I'm going to go back. I gave it an 8.8. 8.8. 8. 8. I thought it was good. And I actually thought it was not as good as last year. And only probably because of the same thing you said. Last year, when we took the trail, nobody was around us. Yeah, and we were more tuned up. Well. Because we didn't have those. Even when we got there, like, damn, we wish we had some fireball nippers. Yeah. Yeah, because we found out they didn't serve booze there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play clips from oh, no, I'm scared the hayride and a clip from. Uh, and this is right from your phone. This is right from the phone. Right yeah. from my phone. Live from the gimmick. I'm not lying to you. This is actual footage that you're about to listen to. Audio footage of me, Frank, the boss, and Frank's new lady friend. Right here. A to, blunt, to be blunt podcast. I'm in. That's it, P. I'm in right now. I get, for the rest of the, that's it. I'm in voice recording. So this right is here right where we start pocket. the. Um, really? I hope you're ready to the chop hay it ride. up. Started the whole thing. <laughs> wow, you're playing it right from the top. You're an asshole. <laughs> you're gonna be sitting there for two hours to chop out a couple of bites, you know. <laughs> no, but when you load it in, you'll, I'm out, I'm out. you'll see the, you'll see the spikes, and that's when you right. So, no, yeah, you're right. We're all tuned up. We have some beers. We tell. ate, you know. So it's about to be getting real lit. We're going in the barn. We're going no. in the barn. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> the barn. We no, are this going is in. this is already different than last. So no, you're on the hair I did. No. They start bringing you into this Go barn. Home. Kind of promos. How come the skeleton didn't have any guts? Because he's a damn skeleton. I've been waiting all year for that one. Uh Alright, one more. How come the T Rex couldn't do pushes? Because he's freaking dead. (laughs) Just like all of you are going to be. After those barn doors open. You're on a journey to hell. You're recording, right? You're on a journey to hell. Hell yeah. Once that wagon flips, say goodbye, folks. <laughs> Welcome oh, to the haunted hayride. I'm going to Oh, no. Oh, 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 o
My god! Oi, oi, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> He said, oink, oink, motherfucker. <laughs> you got all up in your face. I saw his blood drip on you, I think. <laughs> this was creepy, man. Yeah. And then this is when we went to the asylum. Yeah, I think that's right when we went to the asylum. But that oink, oink, motherfucker was the I shit. I just drank my... I just drained my dick. So this dude starts climbing up the back of the thing. The, 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 oh my god, they're on the cage. They're on the cage. There's a cage around us. Okay. This guy starts climbing up from the outside. Music comes in and I start going into the promo. Like away from each other, oh, that shit up. Yo, come on, I'm coming for you. Come on, guy, got the chainsaw. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you're a sick son of a bitch. That's right. You're a, you're a former gang member. <laughs> who, who blew the air horn? <laughs> I don't know. To someone in the crowd. Did somebody curse? <laughs> Cry in the cage if you so dare. Climb the cage if you want to scare. That's too, too, not bad. That's right, you joined us. Why don't you come over here? I got to tell you a thing or two. <laughs> Fix your hat to the right or the wow. left, but center it to your head, goddammit, because you look ridiculous. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Like a headless horseman? It looks like have you have no a idea. dildo hanging out of a sock out of your head. What? What's hanging out of your mouth then? Oh! Oh! On her, and she beat you back, bro. Oh. That will be on the podcast. Cheers to that. <laughs> oh, I am a guy out of your mouth, then. <laughs> that will be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he already knew it. He forgot about it. <laughs> this guy was lit. Yo. Go that way. No. <laughs> go ahead, go that way. Uh, now we're in the walkthrough. <laughs> they keep <laughs> putting us in the wrong <laughs> Yeah, we're going through oh, this yeah. like circles. Okay. Go that way. No, go that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo! Wow! You hit the machine gun! Oh, Thank God we got rid of those kids. Oh, I hear a oh no! Oh! No. No. no! At this point, I take no. off. No. No. <laughs> no. BC starts shoving it up behind everyone. He's out! No. He's like, it's like you say PC, you say Bo! He's gone! He's like people down and shit. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, that chair's been working out. <laughs> that chair's been working out. <laughs> what is this, Ryan? <laughs> oh, my God, yo. Scott, what do you think, yo? <laughs> yeah, that sounded like an adventure, if there ever was one. There, like, literally seven out of eight of those clips, I totally forgot. Oh, about. my God. And that brought back so... I mean, how did I give that a 7.5? I don't, I, don't, I don't know, bro. I sounded like I had one hell of a time. <laughs> you sound like you had the best time of your life. I did. It was a good time. You literally, oh, man. Time. You were on fire. I think all this night. time we probably had to step it up because, you know, we were with women. You know, you're with your your wifey. I was with my lady friend. So we uh -huh. couldn't act like the biggest two pussies that walked through the trail like we did last time. So, but I yeah, guess. it was a great experience. Anyone listening, rec we me and PZ will both recommend to definitely visit Legends of Fear in Shelton. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do the VIP. Spend a little money. Enjoy your night. <laughs> the question is, what's the next stop, bro? What are we going to do next? I don't know, man. I really... There's been a couple of places you had on the radar. I think one of them I, was like Demented Effects. So that that was a, in Massachusetts. It had like a booth at the Big E. So that brought... That's right. But don't the then, pyramid to power work there? I don't know. <laughs> Last year we went to the one up in Nomads. That was sick. So maybe we revisit that. Maybe so. Maybe to this year is the year of repeats. 
The repeats, the reruns, you know? Well, it's just hard because there's so many of them. And even if they're highly rated, they end up, some of them end up really bad as we found out. True. True. Well, that's not even going to compare because this weekend, the party keeps going. It never ends. That's right. So this weekend, we're going for karaoke. And Peasy's making his long awaited premiere <laughs> at the Butterfly. That's right, right there in West Harford, Connecticut. <laughs> we've been talking about this place for years we've been really have like we really had like we go to karaoke quite a bit and we always wanted to fucking go to this place because apparently it's like it's like this asian restaurant that at night converts into like the biggest most popping karaoke place like ever really apparently. oh yeah and yeah. you're you're a karaoke legend that's right that's right he is that's i've right. only been there once with you but like <laughs> i've heard of the stories oh that's he right a legend. it's true i do love karaoke so that's what we're gonna go do uh, I mean, the real question is like, I've been like, we've done this a million times. Like Frank, what's your favorite song for karaoke to do? I don't know, man. I guess at the mood I'm in, I'm going to go Frank Sinatra, New York, New York. Cause it's so that is a the, go-to of the, you know, soon to be 28 time champion, New York Yankees. That's true. That's true. That's true. And and you an know, all time classic and favorite of mine. As That's well. right. Scott, you got a favorite karaoke song. I mean, when I'm feeling it and I just want to get the party started, it's oh. all about Little John and the East Side Boys. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's your go to? Yeah, man. No shit. But it all depends on the mood, ball, but that's ball. a great party one to get the get the. Man, going. I wish we had that beat right now. Wait, wait. So <laughs> you're, dun, dun, dun. you're telling me, Scott, dun, 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 dun. that you go. Dun, right? dun, dun, dun. And you, I don't And he goes to the windows, to the walls. So the sweat drops down, down my balls. Yo, he even oh, knows the words, yo. Crawl. Oh, skeet, skeet, motherfucker. Come okay, on. hold on, oh, hold on. Oh, skeet, skeet, god damn. You get everybody in the bar, club, wherever you're at, rocking out to that one. That is a great song. Man, yo. I Scott's can't trying to get the ladies low. He's trying to, you know, those CrossFit women like to do squats. So Scott wants to get them low. Sweat dropping off my balls, man. <laughs> I can see the Scott. I can see the Scott doing this. Okay. I can see the Scott doing this shit, yo. Oh my God, this is a Scott gimmick for sure. <laughs> Amazing. The fact that everyone that, knows that hook, man. It's like the most known <laughs> hook in history. Dude, I just, I'm still impressed, bro. I oh. pictured this guy going up there and doing like uh, Triple H's theme. Some, I thought he was gonna uh, do some wrestling like some theme. 90s band or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> or like the evolution theme, yo. Oh, man. Evolution is a mystery. Don't get me wrong, though. I could do a, a mean 90s boy band jam, you know, if you wanted me to. Oh, wow. Stop. Maybe we should just do like an on air in sync, you know, but Backstreet Boys. What's your go to song? Oh, man. I guess, you know. We could, what do you want to do? If you want me to be in sync. I already did one. We ain't going to do another right now, are we? I mean, no, are we not? I mean, it's, we're already in the mood. I think we're getting hype right here. We got to practice for this weekend. I know. Stop. I got to think what week I'm making my debut. Like, I feel like we got to pick some kind of one of them. Boy band gimmicks. What do you like, bro? What's the song I'm, you like? I'm good with N Sync, man, especially Bye Bye Bye. But, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> That's a classic. <laughs> really? Bye Bye Bye? Anybody Jamie, out there know that knows me? Me and Jamie Glanders did that at a Xavier uh, and Marcus Balagallo at a Xavier Shut up. Mercy Mixer. We got freshman year. Let's see year. if this thing works. Uh, I did so. this back in high school, too. I think I won, a, uh, I won first place. I won like a new computer. Wow, with so my, Scott's with my NSYNC dance moves. Are you going to bust them out? Some 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> Dude, is he really going to do this? Is he going to bust them out? I don't know. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye. This is the greatest. 
greatest day ever. I'm doing it. Wait a minute, I Probably gonna start a fight. I know this can't be right. Hey, baby, come on. I loved you endlessly. When you This guy doesn't even need the words, bro. He doesn't even need the words. That's amazing. Make it alone. For the sky. No I wanna see you out that door, baby. Bye 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 bye. I don't wanna, wanna be a fool for you. Just another player in the game for two. <laughs> Might sound crazy, but it ain't no lie. Bye 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 bye. I wanna make it tough. I just wanna tell you that I had enough. Might sound crazy, but it. All right, all right. Time out. Time if I was out. coming in and out of the microphone, <laughs> for those of you not watching at home, oh that's because God. I was dancing. <laughs> I almost wow. wish I should have kept the camera on the fucking, on the Scott. On the Scott the whole time. He was trying to bust out. That <laughs> boy, man, was out there. He was turning in a microphone. He won, man. We he... need to get some of the fucking Clorox wipes out down here immediately. Why is that? Because, yo, he fucking rubbed his shit all over that balls? thing. I don't yeah. know. It's like he was trying to like it looked like it touched his balls or some <laughs> shit, bro. Oh, what the man. fuck? That's great. Wow. Just wow. You know? <laughs> <sighs> man. <laughs> I can't believe that just what happened. What the fuck is going on? I don't know. Man. Things are getting out of hand here. <laughs> this is this is off the, red, off the wheels. Things have gone crazy. I I wanna know if you got a favorite karaoke <laughs> song, call in 860-384-7110. Tell us what is your favorite karaoke song. I need some ideas. But PZ, you never even told us what your favorite karaoke song is. You asked uh, Scott, and then that was it. Yo, you Boy, know my what? shit. You know my jam, bro. Is it officially Man in the Mirror? It's got to be Man in the Mirror. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've seen you make... Oh! I've seen PZ the first <laughs> time he did that song. He made a 55-year-old... Grown man, member Biker of guy. the Hell's Angels, right. for sure. With Say cry. The burliest dude I ever saw. Oh, yeah. He said, man, that was the greatest performance I've ever seen. I almost got a tear in my eye. I was hitting the dance move, Scott. He came up to PZ. I couldn't believe Were it. you Jamonin? Oh, yeah. Shimon. Shimon. No, it's not even Jamon, oh, you it, jabron. It's Shimon. Oh, man. It's Shimon. <laughs> Shimon. Shimon. The man. The, the man. 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 Like, the man. The man. <laughs> Yo. I really hope GP's listening because he'd appreciate that right uh, now. Yeah, that's his shit. Oh, that was pretty man. much the uh, the lion of the bachelor party. What's that? The man, the, the man. man. The man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, yo. Well, that's what it is. It's my birthday. So I'm going to fucking take down the rest of this fireball you brought me. There's already been karaoke. So it's been a pretty good birthday, I'd say. We haven't yeah, even, that's like, great. We're just bra- like getting through shit, you know? That's I hope thing. we see the Scott live at Butterfly this weekend, you know? I think, uh, you know, let's we'll talk about what time, but yeah. I yeah, you know, it's there. a late night thing, you know, 9, 10 p.m. Oh, devastating. Scott, did you see anything fucked up happen in Walmart this week? Uh, this week, this week. Um... Well, almost like a week ago, it was weird. It was random. I, I got out of my car after I parked, and there was a, I'm not kidding, a used tampon just right there on the ground. What? <laughs> kind of I don't what, know how dude? that happens, but. She um, probably ran out. She probably had to get bought a pack at Walmart. Or that's probably, nasty. Probably you live in Hartford, so maybe who knows if she even bought it. But <laughs> then she just ripped it out and put it Use in. It, yeah, who oh, knows? No, my mic is falling over. Damn, are you right over there? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> God, we're in trouble. Uh, we literally just got started. We barely even, I don't know how far you are into yours, but. I'm completely, I got a couple more sips. Oh, my God. A couple sips, dude. This shit's still full. You know how heavy that is? Yeah, you oh. got like a third gone. Damn, yo. But I opened mine well before we came on air. If I start taking sips of that, then we're, this whole production is going to go way downhill. <laughs> I'm already on my second beer, so. Wow. 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 Yowie, wowie. Damn. Well. Wow, so PZ's birthday right here live. I'll play a game. You know, I'm gonna, I want to test. We test the Scott every week, right? But I want to test Frank Knox. And anybody who wants Whoa. to call in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. 
You got listen. You you and me have been test me with what, bro? You you you've done you've done been with me for a long long time on the, on the road of you know the get high rapper. Yep. We've we've been in studios together all over the place many a times. We've uh, done shows together many a times. Yeah, we've met the bangers. Yeah, no, we met the bangers. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You know, that's one of my fondest memories. <laughs> that was such a weird show. It was, it was great, though. Right in New Haven. Because those know? were like the only dudes that were legit, and they came up to you immediately, and then we smoked and chilled with them, you know? That's right, in the QX4. Yeah. Man, that was crazy. That's right. What I want to do, though, is like I want to play a game, and I want to get the listeners to call in and try to do it, too. Right? right. What I want to do is see how well you know PZ. If you're a fan of PZ, then I'm going to play some very obvious songs. All right. All right? I'm just going to give you one. All right, let's go. And... Let's hear it. I'll let the intro play, and then in the middle of... Uh, Damn, this is Stump the Knox. Stump the <laughs> Knox, bro. Yeah. Ex- well, yeah, you can kind of look at it like that, actually. But, I mean, you should but know... But keep in mind, I've, I've done, like, the, the ad-libs and the background vocals on stage with PZ for a lot of these songs, so... Absolutely. I don't know, I'm, I'm really fucking up. I mean, you haven't had to in a long time. Yeah, I know, you know? I'm rusty. All right. Let's, you ready? It's been a while, yeah. First line. That's all I need. I'll you play. I'm gonna play the line. I'm gonna play the intro of the song, all right. and then I'm expect you to know the first line. All Man, right. I thought it was just the song. Fuck. No, the song you're gonna know. All right. All right. I'm working on it. This is killing me. Stay with us, everybody. That's right. Stop popping bubbles. the bubbly. Chip, Project P, what is the number one draft pick? Yeah, big waste, it's going down, certified, motherfuckers. Big waste, packing glocks, not known to sell rocks, smoking bud, fuck the cops. Yo, he's, he's really... Big waste, packing glocks, not known to sell rocks, smoking bud, fuck the cops, known to tell you how we pop, we strong, packing gay, take on any group of gang, that's why we stay strapped, with a fucking Uzi bang, bang. Oh, man. saying waste, stay certified, see your corpse on the side, how you been getting <laughs> Dude, it was like, that's like a 2005 album, you know? Oh, you want to, I'll give you another one. No, but that's great, but I thought I was going to have something harder, but that's funny. The hottest. <laughs> oh, no, the oh my God, what's going on here? Saying, you know, I'm oh not my packing God. Glocks, but apparently I guess I was selling rocks back then. I don't oh. know what I was doing. It's depressing that, uh... You thought that that was too uh, easy. I'm packing Glocks. I'm not knowing the sort right. rocks. I'll give you another one. One that I would think that you would I'll know. Just pour it up evenly, bro. What do you think this is? A sampling? Wow. The whole thing now? Okay. Wow. I just want a sip. Don't even, you know. This is still a sip. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's do this shit. I'm going to give you another one. This one, maybe, you know. It's... I want a peasy song. You want to, like, but do you want, like, you want something you would know. I yeah, wanna... yeah. 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 That's what I mean. That was the PZ song, but it was featuring Frank Knox. I mean, it is. It is. All right. So let's see if you know this one. Wow, I mean, this is totally PZ. I mean, this it's... This is episode 16. It's PZ's birthday, bitch. That's right. <laughs> it's going down. It's going down. Yeah, motherfucker. You smoke yeah. Here. You need some work. 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 You need to get some money to call your boy up, man. Hit me up, man. Probably know me as Middletown's own Get High Rapper. That's a good guess, I guess. Not that I know. Oh, man. Oh, I'm upset right now. All right. What's the to get in tough? Hit me up. Oh, come on. You need some money in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, Of course, of course. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. It's I thought right. you were gonna give me a, you know, that was old. That was towards the trail end of the career. Yeah, but you still couldn't get it. <laughs> trail end. Who said it's over? That's right. God damn it! How dare oh, wow. you? I should have quit while I was ahead. How dare you, bro? I should have quit while I was ahead. All right. 
if anyone else thinks they can live up to the task, I want to call in 860-387-110 and see if you can, you know. Name a PZ song? That's right. Guess well, the PZ song. I hope song. the boss calls in because she's the only, or Johnny D, or, <laughs> or Joey D, or. Oh, dude. I mean, there's so many of the Ds. Or GP, or. Or Lucy, Probably. or anyone listening, you know? <laughs> or Lucy. <laughs> or the rest of the alphabet. Oh, my God, yo. <laughs> well, we tried to play the game. Let's go into our next bit. That was terrible. <laughs> my name is Brian Pillman Jr. I am one-third of the New Heart Foundation on Major League Wrestling. And you are listening to PZ on the To Be Blunt Podcast. Oh, man, you heard that? You were listening to PG. It's Brian <laughs> Pillman Jr. It sure as fuck is. It is. BPJR. That's right. Well, we got to get into our new video segments, you know? We give you a lot. Of- yeah, we did the, you know, Legends of Fear trail hayride thing, and we're going to continue it with the Halloween season and bring you some funny Halloween pranks. I think we. I think, I think that would be a good thing to do, you know? We can give them a little bit of Halloween, the Hollow Hollow. Last week we gave you a little top 10 gimmick, you know. This week we're going to give you a a top five of what is said to be some good Halloween pranks. That's right. We won't be the judge. Actually, we will be the judge, won't we? We'll be the judge and you could be the jury. That's right. I guess they can. Apparently, that's the tail end of the other one. Ah, uh, number six. You gotta go full screen, no? No. Yes. All right. Well, this is where we intended to start after this prank. What the fuck? Yo, you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Ah, oh, and Penn Slander. Yo! He, he got all Street Fighter right here. Here's where we wanted to start. No, I hope you're going full screen and fuck nothing up. Mister. Wow. I mean, this dude's hanging from a tree. He's literally hanging from a tree. I mean, I would fucking bug out. I don't know. What would you do if you were driving down the street and you saw that? That's more fucked up than funny, if you ask me. This guy just drives around him, too. <laughs> we heard what I would do earlier when this happened. The trail of terror. But I would have been out way quicker than that dude. Oh, no. No, I'm getting last Sunday vibes right now. Wow. <laughs> wow. With the gore. Oh, no. So she's just on Tinder to get these reactions. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> oh my god, yo. Yeah. What was that? Sp- uh. Spider dog. Come on. Yo. He <laughs> goes, you know what? You could have went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a dog? I don't know. That dog, I mean, he par- parkour up the wall. Yeah, that's some crazy shit. This guy's got a chainsaw. He's chasing after the guy. It's devastating. But it looks like he's just half a human. Squiggling. Devastating. Oh, my God. That freaked me out, too, yo. That freaked me out. I'm sorry. Oh, that shit bugs me out, yo. It bugs me out. Wow. Sure bugs me out. I mean, if yeah. you guys have a favorite prank or want to talk anything about the Halloween season, 
Call in now. 860-384-7110. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Give them to the pranks, you know? you know? We love it. Or if you've been to any haunted houses in CT or the New England area, or even throughout the country, let us know what you think. Some recommendations would be great. It would be great, you know? Oh, no. We don't want to do anything like that. We got a lot of stuff to cover. Yeah, we got to get into, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, we got a 911 call coming up. Oh, my God. That's right. The 911 call. I, I don't think it topped last week, so. Oh, uh, no. well. I mean, last week's was so good, as you heard, in the haunted house for whatever reason. I was like, I think I just drained my dick. <laughs> <I heard it. laughs> that was good shit. Yeah. That was good shit. I don't know if it was as good as that, but it was pretty good. It was pretty good. We'll let him have it. No. Do you need to use the video? It's already up now, so. There's a bottle of conditioner in me. What? My wife and I belong to a wholesale club and got a really big bottle of Mother Jeffrey's nail care conditioner. need to tell them about a wholesale club. We were in the shower and we put it in me and but it went all the way in. Your wife put the bottle oh, no. in? Uh, in my, um, in my, uh, my behind. I'm going to send an ambulance. Can you wait? She's uh, laughing. Are you all right? Oh, yeah. I was, I was just a little surprised. <laughs> that <laughs> would be too, buddy. Sure I'm second. Sweetie, can you please get the cat out of here? Uh, the ambulance is about four <laughs> minutes away. Oh, no. I can really feel it. The bottle? I think I'm going to sneeze. Is that bad? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Where's the cat? <laughs> oh, oh man. no. He sneezed no. it out. Oh, no, dude. Unbelievable. 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 <laughs> There's so many. I can't I mean, the cat stood in. I hope you pooped the cap out. I'm sure he did. You think he did? I mean, he, I mean the cat had to come out eventually, yeah. right? It's not still there, right? I hope not. That could be devastating. I don't know. Speaking of devastating, do you guys see the video of the deer that jumped through the salon door? The deer, yeah, I've seen that. Deer? The deer. This guy's sitting there getting his hair cut. The deer. I've seen my favorite Instagram account comment on it, and it was uh, it was money. You did? Yeah. Oh, dude, Scott. This guy's sitting there getting his hair cut, and this deer comes crashing through the fucking front window and goes nuts. Goes, I don't have to worry about that. Goes fucking nuts to here, but Jesus. I'm telling you. This guy's just getting his shit done. It's a very popular <laughs> area. <laughs> it's fucking random. It's good. It's, it's incredible. Wait a second. The color gets worse. It gets worse. I was going to say, there could be a back window, right? Like, it, yeah, it's definitely still in there, right? There's <laughs> still going to happen to that. Here it goes. Oh, to the door. <laughs> My question is, why did that guy say close the door? Did he say close the door? What, he grab a pair of scissors? He's like, oh, don't worry. I'm a marksman. I'm a hunter. And I'm going to kill this deer and bring it home. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so fucking That's crazy. Devastating. So devastating. Oh, thank God for insurance. It's on video. <laughs> there's no way they could. They, there's no way they could fight it. Oh now, my right? God! That's uh, it. I can't believe their video actually had audio. Most most places don't have the fucking audio with the video. Oh. You have to get everybody's real real um, uh, reactions there. Well, well, we get... have video and we have audio. That's right. Well, you know we, we got everything TV now. This is 2019, and now we're gonna get some news. God damn it. That's right. When it comes to the most legitimate news on the market, you turn no further than right here on 2 B Blunt. Tell me what you got, Peter Parker. You see how I just hit the fucking post like that, bro? That was, that was fucking great. magic. Sounds like fucking it, magic, yo. Sounds like Peter Parker is about to come through. <laughs> Mary Jane, she's already here, though. So, <laughs> so picture this, guys. Right? You're in Philadelphia. Watching a hockey game or something, and the team sucks. Right? The Flyers. That's right. So you go into the Wells Fargo Center's where, assembly room. Where you can see the Flyers or the 76ers play. That's right. And inside the disassembly room, you can smash up dishes, dishes. You can take a sledgehammer to a TV. And you can unleash your rage and everything in sight. Right inside the arena. So your team loses. You're all fucking pissed off. You go to this fucking room. And you get your stress relieved by smashing shit. So it's That's an actual great. rage room. Yes. It's a rage room. I wonder if Ben Simmons will be hitting it up since he's cold from downtown. <laughs> Yo, it's, it's crazy. It's literally the first one they've ever done in like a, a sports the arena. The rage rooms are cool. That's awesome. I I've think never, it'll be good. I've been to the Wells Fargo Center. It's pretty dope. 
I just feel like, uh, you know, after, like, you know, your team loses a score or a goal or something, like, you're going to go in there, and you're going to do what you got to do, and you're like, okay, I'm good. And you go back to the seat, and the other team scores another goal, and you're like, I got to go back in. Can you imagine the line for that thing? If Helena <laughs> Sell was hosted at oh, Wells Fargo? No, no, no. Oh, my yeah. God. It should have been there. You know what? Wells Fargo Center was when Roman Reigns won the Royal Rumble the first yeah. time. They should have used this back then. But, of course, you'd know that. Yeah. You know? Imagine if the... We might have to go to the next Helena wrestling Sell show at the there. Wells Fargo Center. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like, Come we on. We have to do it. If well, you guys want to go to a 76ers game or a Flyers game and then eat a cheesesteak, you could count Frank Knox in. This is, oh. oh, I'm all about the cheesecakes. Cheesesteaks. Cheese, cheesecakes and cheesesteaks, actually. Well, if you want a cheesecake, you just go to Junior's in Brooklyn. But if you want a cheesesteak, you go to Pat's and right. in Philadelphia, Scott. So which one will it be? Well, I meant to say cheesesteak, but, you know, I accidentally said cheesecake, but I can go for that, too. The only way that's going to happen is if you bring a cooler and hit Brooklyn before you go to Philadelphia. That's it. All right. Then you have the best of both worlds. You know, there's a Junior's at Foxwoods. If I Ooh. can, like, stay uh, sober. Wow. Oh, I wonder if uh, Flip Gordon works there. <laughs> <laughs> or Joey Janela. Flip Gordon might work there. I haven't heard his name in a long time. Dude, you know, I did read one headline. That was really fucking funny. For what they called a bad break-in. <laughs> right? So, an Ohio teenager returns home to find a sliding glass door had been shattered. So, the kid's, like, obviously, like, what the fuck? I got to see what the fuck's going on. And he's going through the house, trying to see, you know, it looks like somebody broke in because there's shit all over the place. The door's broken. Yeah. And he finds a billy goat napping in the bathroom. A billy goat. <laughs> a billy yes, goat. a billy goat. A billy goat. Right? Rough. So, and you think that was good, it gets better. Because I found this great newscast. <laughs> this guy, all right, <laughs> he tries very hard to make this as funny as he can. And it's literally the worst humor of all time. Well, like, he's a news no, reporter. No, you no, you got to see this. You got to see this. Oh, it's, terrible. Nice. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. break. <laughs> uh, as <laughs> did you get that? All right, bad break in. As, uh, as no, you Sheriff used his line. Yeah. That was that line. He said like prank, but it isn't. He said bad Check break. I just laughed hysterically watching the video on security. So um, let's go. But, so, like, chilling in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> he's just bathroom. chilling. Now I finally know yeah. what a yard goat is. is. Oh, oh, he's wondering where the squatty potty is. It was at. a goat. Wow. Oh. The deputies entered the house cautiously. So the cops had to the come and take him out. Only to find the suspect asleep yeah. on the bathroom floor. The goat suspect woke up. And attempted to bury Why are they smiling? The I don't know. It was like the, the proudest moment. The as... That's right. I wonder if there were any. Ramifications. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. The puns are endless. I'm noticing a theme here. You know, three segments in a row. We're breaking shit. You know? We got the deer. We got the arena. Now we got to go. That's What's right. going on here? It might have been the G O A T of the uh, videos I've seen That's lately. Right. Well, I got the next story is actually for Scott. All right, Scott, check this got. out. So, a Missouri bar. Instead of charging customers by the drink, have charged have started to charge them by the hour instead. That's unheard of. Yeah, I know it's an unusual business model. I agree. Charging customers by the hour instead of by the drink. So this place named the Open Concept, they charge customers by the hour to enjoy unlimited numbers of drinks. Unfucking limited number of drinks, right? Unlimited. So, so it's like, like an open bar that you pay for ahead of time. I mean, like honestly, the first thing that came to my mind is like. What kind of a bar is it? Are there slouches that just stay at the bar because I got nowhere else to go? And it's going, like, trying to get more money out of them. But then I'm like, holy shit, you could drink a lot in an hour. You could get a fucking bond. You get real bond. For, and you want to have to spend a third of the price. And like, you want to have to spend $500 drinking with Joey Janela. Yeah, and Joey Janela gave a me. Could I just be, like, 18 shots? Let's go. Wow. Green tea's on deck. <laughs> oh, no. Everybody watch out. Everybody at that bar, watch out. Here comes the Scott. <laughs> Buying out the bar. <laughs> Missouri's a little far, though. So this last piece of news, I think, is actually the most important thing you're going to hear today. Or actually, the most important thing you're going to see today. All right, Scott, you thought the yard goat video good was, you know, was like amazing. I'm, I'm partial to yard goats. All right. So this actor in the Philippines... Set what is believed to be the unofficial world record, 
where he kept his eyes open without blinking for one hour, 17 minutes, and three seconds. So is this without any, like, pins or anything holding up his nothing. eyelids? Nothing. So this guy named Paolo Balestros. Wow, sounds like he did the largest, <laughs> most potent line of coke, and that's why his <laughs> eyes stayed open. <laughs> well, wait till you see where you're about to see it, right? So it's competing against the comedian Alan Kay as part of a segment on the East Bulaga, whatever the hell that is, which is apparently it's like a variety show. You know, the places celebrities against each other in like unusual challenges. But this thing didn't end. So it's like Survivor. Because that's kind weird. of, kind of in a way, yeah. Because Survivor has celebrities now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, I think everybody needs to see this, you know, because this literally is like the most incredible thing. You're going to die. This is uh, Paolo? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Guy in the right, yo. <laughs> look, at, look at his eyes. He looks like he's cross-eyed. So we're watching on the right. Yeah, the guy on the right is watching. <laughs> look at the faces he makes, dude. It's like, he's I don't like, I'm gonna fuck your mother. Yeah, I don't know if he's talking <laughs> shit. Left just looks like he's gonna cry. Why is he licking his lips, man? What is, what is he doing? I don't know, dude. He's all jammed up. <laughs> Why are his eyes crooked? <laughs> Yo, that's not the greatest fucking thing. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, they dimmed a little bit. The guy on the left keeps turning his head to show off his one ear. Piercing. He's making faces at him. He's taunting him. He's literally taunting him. Three minute mark. Three minute mark. Right, this fucking shit went, went on. Three minutes in, I wasn't even looking at the time. I was looking at the ride. It went on for literally an hour and 17 minutes. Unbelievable. Not, Unbelievable. Not blinking. Not blinking. But the faces he made, dude. <laughs> he looked like he, like, boy, right when he said that about doing his giant line when he said his last name, it sounded just like what he did. Because when you looked at him, you're like, wow, this dude's jammed up. Jammed. This dude's real jammed up. And I'm kind of upset that we're not going to, unfortunately, be able to call. Don Kincaid now. Yep. Ooh, well. Don, come on. Where are you at? Don Kincaid's taking care of a personal matter, which we wish him Our the best with. thoughts and prayers That's are with right. the Don Kincaid family. That's right. So, instead of Don Kincaid, we're going to give you the news right here at the Wrestling Roundtable Discussion segment, baby. But in tribute of Don Kincaid, let's hear it. Ladies and gentlemen, Exclusive breaking news brought to you by the Kincaid Hotline. And now, written out reporter, Don Kincaid. It's Don Kincaid, baby! That's right! We got the latest, the greatest news, and today was full of them. Man, a lot of breaking news coming into the segment, coming right off about the draft. The draft, yeah. Huge. I mean, you might as well start. I feel like we should just start there. Yeah, no? we'll start at the draft, man. They have announced the pools. The pools. For the eligible superstars for both Friday Night SmackDown and Monday Night Raw. That no meeting, shit. Yeah. This is breaking, that, right? Oh, this is yeah, like this is breaking. Not even like hours old. That meeting, there's only... Breaking news. A certain wow. group that can be drafted by each brand. Wow. So... What you're saying is there's a certain list that these GMs can choose from. Yes, yeah, so there's only a certain list. So start off Friday Night SmackDown. We have the Raw Women's Champion, Becky Lynch. You're not going to read all like. No, we're going to just all name right. the, the right. highlights. We got yeah, Roman yeah. Reigns. All right. We got The Fiend. We got the OC as a whole. Orton, McIntyre, Lashley. And I'm, those are my major. And then Kevin Owens and Cesaro. But for Raw, they have Rollins, Lesnar, Flair, and then, like, they list Titus O'Neil up here, which is funny. And then she hasn't done Shinsuke, anything. Nakamura, the New Day, which I'm very surprised. New of, Day? And Aleister Black. And wow. then you have King Corbin and. And like, what about Samoa for. Uh, what about the other list? I gave you both. That lists. was both. But I think so. it makes sense, though, because if you do one more than the other, like, otherwise, tomorrow night would just be all the top draft picks, and then Monday we would just get mid-card. But and- what is there going to be tiers that these guys are ranked? Because why wouldn't SmackDown just go Rollins, Fiend, and everyone that's in Lynch? You know what I'm saying? Well, they would just go with, with whoever they have eligible there. And but- then whoever's left over could sign to whomever they want. 
Yeah, that's kind of whomever true. you want. And like honestly, true. that's like an extra like twenty to thirty. Like people, Antonio Brown can't sign to, to whomever the, the he wants. He can't find the job. He's gonna go to the XFL. It's gonna happen with Colin Kaepernick, and they're gonna win a championship. I hope that's the New York team. Oh, Andrew Luck's gonna yeah, go to the yeah. XFL too because his dad's a CFO. But the, you never know because the Colts have guaranteed money on him. So, but that's a conversation for another show. Well, that's another one. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I mean, it's big, big, big exclusive stuff going on here. I mean, they released the rules that they're letting through. Uh, for every two picks, SmackDown gets Raw gets three. Three, because of the hours. Yeah, because of the hours. hours. It makes sense. It's the same thing they did in 2016 when they did the draft. But game. how is Brock Lesnar not a part of this? Like, So you're telling me that Raw wouldn't draft Rollins, Lesnar, and then Paul Heyman's running Raw? So who's going to advocate for... Brock Lesnar, which I thought was going to be smacked down all the way. But now I'm thinking about it. It's like, let's be real. Is, got Paul, is Paul Heyman going to go to SmackDown every week, even though he's running Monday Night Raw? He might already be I, at SmackDown I, I every week. For get, all we he'll know. get that extra paycheck to show up on SmackDown. So I gonna, feel like he's already there. He is there. Yeah, uh, He's got to be because apparently he's traveling every show. I read some shit can. that the, like Bischoff's not even like doing anything. Which, I mean, I don't believe half the shit that those fucking smarts out there say. What Dave Meltzer says? Yeah, whatever those Meltzers say. But, you know, still at the same time. before Dave Meltzer or anyone broke the draft, which is happening Friday, remember that me and my man Peasy broke it well before that. Well, more importantly, you're the one that, you know. Well before that. (laughs) That's right. We did. We did. We did. And anybody who thinks otherwise, they can do this. Shut the fuck up! (laughs) (laughs) Tell him one more time. That's right. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> so, I mean, this what do greatest. you guys think that's going to happen on the draft? Because we're talking the draft. This is probably the point where the Scott comes in with a bold prediction. I know. I mean, honestly, we got to figure out who's going to be, as the old school peasy would say, the number one draft pick. How can Raw only be eligible for Rusev and SmackDown's only eligible for Lashley? So, someone's got to pass. No, it just means that on that show, like tomorrow night, those superstars in that list are eligible for on the SmackDown draft. Doesn't mean they can go to SmackDown. Yeah, I know that, but they're they're eligible to be drafted. Yeah, they're eligible to be drafted. The people that are not on that list are eligible for Monday's draft. And I just say the reason being is because if 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 it was a if it was a legit, so do draft, we know how many picks we're gonna have tomorrow night? Total, it said overall what we got. 30 for Raw, or 30 for SmackDown, 41 for... Tomorrow night. For Raw. I think it's maybe half of that. So and you're then, telling me within and the And then the first, other half will be on the other You're telling me within the first 15 picks, you're not going to see The Fiend, Reigns, Lashley. I mean, yeah, you're going to whoever's on that SmackDown list. Whoever's on the Raw list, we're going to have to wait to hear their name on Monday. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I but, think this makes sense. But it it, it just doesn't really because make otherwise, sense why would I, as a wrestling fan, tune in Monday night to see the leftovers drafted? Am I really just going to want to see Jinder Mahal and Heath Slater? But and- that tells me the top five guys that stand out to me on SmackDown and Raw, of course, are going to go there. Okay, I mean, there's going to be Raw drafts tomorrow night as well. You're sure? You oh do- yeah, that's that's the the way they're putting it. There's going to be sm- there's still going to be. Uh, uh, whoever gets the first pick based on the opening match, right? Breaking news: Rollins versus uh, Reigns is going to be the which first you match. Was going to be WrestleMania to open the show, which <laughs> right. I, I still kind of think it might be for a title at WrestleMania 36. But anyway, um, that match will decide who the first uh, draft pick is. And obviously, the way it stands right now, Rollins represents Raw, Reigns represents SmackDown. So if Rollins wins, then Raw will get the first draft pick. If Reigns wins. And SmackDown I'm will just, get the first I'm just pick. interested to see how many picks they get per show. I mean, and this could carry on for a month. If we if we say it that way, I think we're going to see. I think I would say approximately about 15 draft picks will happen um, per brand. No, so well, yeah, per basically, like 15 will happen for um, SmackDown. So that means maybe 20 have to happen for Raw. About 20 for Raw, yeah. So wow. we'll wait and see tomorrow night. We'll wait and see how it, how it plays out. But I won't be tuned in, but I, I will tune in the next morning because that's how I plan on watching uh, Friday Night SmackDown this Saturday. Night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so who do you think after it's all said and done will be like the four pillars of each show? 
Like, who are going to be the f- top four guys, or females, of course, on, on both shows? I mean, what's, what's the landscape going to look like? I think, I think after what I saw in the first SmackDown, Becky Lynch is going to be the face of SmackDown alongside of... I mean, I just don't know how I see it's possible, but it has to still be Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would agree with you there. Absolutely. It would have to be, right? I agree as well. Have to be Brock Lesnar and, then, and Becky Lynch would have to be like the leading people on SmackDown. And on the Raw side, I mean, I'm going to go to the debacle that happened this weekend. Oh I'm no! Thinking it's Seth Rollins, contrary to what the Scott believes in couples happening in uh, wrestling, they stick them together. But I, I think this is going to test the relationship, and I think it's going to be Seth Rollins and the Fiend because I think he's just too much for uh, te- regular basic television. I don't know. So like, I can't picture no, no, not offense, but I can't picture Seth Rollins being the pillar of anything after, you know. <laughs> I I don't think they can even put him on TV for like two more weeks because I think the crowd's going to eat him up. I mean, I don't think they're over it yet. Hashtag Seth Rollins it's is not, not cool, but that's unfortunately for him, they put him in a shitty position because what he did was not his fault. It was oh, how they ended the match. This is true. You know, I mean, you think he went out there like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to just eat, let them fucking shit on me. I'm going to have this bizarre, unexplainable ending to a match. Well, fuck you. You know what? Let's talk about Hell in a Cell since you're going to bring it up. Let's go right into Hell in a Cell. You brought it up. Well, all, right, all right. All right. All right. All right. Fine. Well, well then, we you know what? get to hear Scott in your perspective on the pillars. And I know Scott... He, All he, right, Scott. Was, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. You're right. Scott, what are your pillars? I know, we're going we're going like back and forth over here. I'm flipping the pages over here. What, what order we're going in. But <laughs> to talk about the draft, just, right? It's just flowing, we're talking Scott. about the draft right now. And if, if you want to call in and give us, tell us what you want to talk what about, your about the draft. Two, what your two pillars of each brand will be. And that's what we're so, leaving it at. So I'm, I'm going to go with my four. So We could give four. So it was supposed to be for, four. For SmackDown. All right, my bad. <laughs> I, I, I'm saying your, your, your top talent for SmackDown is going to be... Talk into the mic, not your paper. Oh, my God. It's going to be Lesnar. <laughs> Damn, yo. Oh, my God. Wow. So I feel like... Piece of shit. Oh, my God. Motherfucker. All right. It's the To Be Blown podcast with PZ's birthday edition, man. Anything right. goes. So, so start bullshit. over, right? <laughs> All right. So anyway, Scott's mad. We got it all fucking out of order. Then he looks at us and he's like, "You can't go me. off the hip." You know, it's not that. Like, well, we got a lot to talk about. We got to talk about the draft. We got to talk about Hell in the Cell. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just trying to keep it flowing here. But anyway, if we're gonna talk we're about, we're trying pillars, to keep it flowing. That's right. We're starting a roadblock because <laughs> we went off the hip. Start drinking beer during the week again. Oh my god. Right. Oh, you know what? Anyway, if anybody cares out there in the To Be Blunt universe, all right. That's right. Our four pillars of SmackDown. I have Brock Lesnar. Lee Scott's four pillars. Not Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. <laughs> Roman Reigns. Oh my god! I've Sounds had, like a bowling alley. Too much bubbly already. <laughs> the Roman Reigns. Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Roman Reigns. This is why I gotta look at my paper. You get those Superman strikes. <laughs> Seth Rollins and, Ooh. and who I think is going to be the number one draft pick <laughs> when Seth Rollins. <laughs> Loses to Roman Reigns tomorrow night. Yo, sorry, Scott. He's gonna lose, and it's gonna cost him the first draft pick, which is gonna be his girlfriend, his fiance, Becky, Becky Lynch. Lynch, number one draft pick. I'm calling it right now. Bold prediction. To that's not a bold Friday prediction. Though. I just told you that beforehand. <laughs> all right. So then, so me, how is that bold? If right. I broke it before so you, I'm gonna. And all of a sudden, it's your bold prediction. No, that's Frank Knox's bold prediction. All right, you're getting loud up in here. So I'm gonna add, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna add on on top of that with a with a, a bolder prediction, if you will. Infowars. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's giving a bold prediction. Because That's right, Alex Jones here. <laughs> of Becky Lynch, the man going to SmackDown as the number one draft pick, she will have to forfeit the Raw Women's Title, and it only makes sense. She'll be on SmackDown. It's a Raw Women's Title. She'll have to forfeit the title. What if Charlotte Flair Flair went to Raw and they just basically switched the titles? We'll see, but I think Charlotte's going to stay on SmackDown. Those are my four pillars of SmackDown. Lesnar, Reigns, Seth, and Becky with considerable um, admiration, I guess, to Kevin Owens and Ricochet. They're going to be they're going to be doing their thing on SmackDown All as right, well. All right, let's get to the forest. Raw. But as far as Raw, let's get quicker this time. A little lackluster. 
But I'm going to go with uh, Strowman, Sasha Banks, Baron Corbin, and after at the outskirts of that, I'm going to say between Randy Orton, who's going to be going to Raw, and uh, Ali. Ali. Yeah. All right. And perhaps Andrade in there as well. Yeah, Andrade, too. And He's just throwing him in. Oh, do you have any more, Scott, you want to add to that? Yeah, this guy's know. got six pillars it's already. Too many. It's too many. So you give no respect to AJ Styles. You give no respect to Samoa Joe. PZ hit me with the sheet clip. Because oh, he's man. given no respect to guys that should be pillars. I'm okay, sorry. Did you right. mention Joe or OC yeah, in your both. pillars? I only gave you two, Scott. Oh. I only gave you two. Right. Well, listen, if I would have remembered my other sheet, I did have the OC actually on the on the raw side. So thank you for reminding me of that. But Samoa Joe, oh. I did forget all about. A little yeah. bit of the bubbly. I mean, yeah, he had a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. He's uh, over. A lot of he the put bubbly. his hand over his head, you know. But when was the last time Samoa Joe was on TV? Like, it's been a while, right? It's, I mean, the dude's the best. Yeah, I mean, for me, he's the best. And when he cuts a promo, and he, I mean, he looks right through you on TV. <laughs> I mean, Samoa Joe is world class. Yeah, That's I right. He's come back and be part of Team Flair, maybe. They don't know what they've been doing because of this draft that's been, like, ever so looming since me and PZ started this podcast. So that's, like, 15, 16 weeks ago. <laughs> 16, actually. Yeah. 16 is of today. And they have, for four months, they've known this draft has been happening. Yeah, he's right. He's and right. they have been so confused, which brings us to the biggest confusion of the weekend, which you wanted to get to. That's right. Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell. That's right. Thank you, Frank. Man. Woo, that's how it's done, baby. The show started off real hot. Hell in a Cell started off great. With- Becky and Sasha, easily that could be like a match of the year candidate. Definitely the best woman's Hell in a Cell. Very that they've match. had thus far. Very innovative. 1,000% the best match of the night. And yes, you actually, you're absolutely right. I didn't even quote that. What, a, what an asshole, dude. You're right. But you gave them other higher tiers, I would assume. You called that a match of the year. I this is true. So. You're right. You're right. Because it could be. It could be a candidate. I mean. I agree. And then after that, though, after this amazing match, it threw on first. That definitely stole the audience. Mm-hmm. Everything just started slowly going down. And down, and down, and down on a steady decline all the way to the main event. It did. They were, I, they I, were booking matches real time during the paper <laughs> During the show. During the show. <laughs> I mean, there well, was only four matches going yeah. in. Yeah. There were, there were three matches before what? Three days before the show, and then they finally did a fourth match. Right. We only announced three matches, and we did the, the prediction. And then there was week. Bailey and Charlotte Flair, who right. is the new champion. But I will Ten say. Ten time champion. Randy Orton and Ali. That's right, Betty. I thought Randy Orton and Ali was a good match. That might have been a little, you know, upskirt. Of the, that, of was, the that, was not, that was that was not that uh, was That had that had zero interest to me because it was built out of nowhere. It was built backstage. It just felt rushed. That's cool. You want to put that match together? Well, I, th- I thought the match was and they cool. were both pillars of you for Raw and SmackDown, but <laughs> they were. I mean, it it did nothing for me. By the way, I didn't even get my pillars, but I'm not going back. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Wow, yeah, I couldn't even get that out. Well, I, had, you right I, had now. To, I had to bring you back the first time. So, I mean, but PZ, you have been fired up about the finale of Hell in a Cell between Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins. I was Fuck fired up before else. they even got there. Fuck everything else. Before they even got there, you I was fired, fired up. up. Because they gave him the opportunity so early. Yeah. We sat here last week yeah. and thought of every possibility. That's right. Oh, for the last month. Of how Seth Rollins still <laughs> walked out champion. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we came up with all kinds of crazy shit. And the one we saw... Was none of those. Eh, 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 eh. Fucking fucked that up. You fucked up. WWE fucked it up. Vince McMahon and Mandy fucked up. Of course he did, because it, it was trash. It, was, like, it made no sense. You're going to DQ no him for a sledgehammer? But it, wasn't, but it wasn't even a DQ. Yeah, I texted you guys right after. I said, you know, I don't think it was a DQ, and that's what they used as their cushion. But you know what's funny is the same thing happened last year at Hell in a Cell. Main event, uh, Braun Strowman versus Roman Reigns. And guess what? No. It ended with an no. undecisive finish, which Hell in a Cell should do. Time out. If you wanted to end it with an undecisive finish, and you're what do they call it? Scott? First off, it's it indecisive. A, yeah, indecisive. Uh, what was a it? A no Scott? contest? Is a that, no contest? Why? Why was it a no contest? No contest because it was so brutal that uh, in the referee's eyes that the fiend could not continue. But when I watched wrestling growing up, if someone couldn't continue, he raised his arm three times. I mean, yeah, that's what happened, but 
I don't know. I think about when the first thing that comes to my mind is when Kevin Owens beat Sami Zayn for the NXT title about five years ago. Yep. It was Kevin Owens won the title. He won it due to referee stoppage. Sami Zayn never quit. He never, he never like got pinned. That's what happened. And that's what they did here. But obviously the crowd did not go with that. It was bullshit. It doesn't help when you don't turn the lights on the entire show and you put a, a dark, and then the red cell. It was just, it was confusing. I could barely it, like make out was, what was happening. And, and honestly, I thought his match at SummerSlam was going to be in the dark. I just had the feeling because I feel like there's this, there is a very uh, uh, big mystique, right, about the, the Bray Wyatt character and the Fiend character. And it made me think of Kane when he first came in in 97, right? His first couple matches were in the dark. With the red lights, just like kind of like last. No, Sunday when was. he wrestled Finn Balor at SummerSlam, the lights were on. That's what I'm saying. The lights were on. I was surprised that they weren't off. You. But then they decided to go backwards and then put the lights off. So now does that mean like every other match is going to be lights off? And all of a sudden, all you got to do is put two fingers on someone's tongue, and you're going to bleed like a sieve <laughs> out <laughs> your mouth, which is just stupid. I mean, which I couldn't even really see, by the way. Because it was red on red on black. It was just terrible, man. Honestly. And the I've, best thing they could do is put these two dudes as far apart from each other as they can. This has sucked the air right out the room. Yeah, I couldn't really right see away. all that blood and see most but, of I mean, if that, they, but... they These guys have to go on separate brands after this to survive. Well, yeah, so that's another thing. I think for sure. It's going to be like a four or five year and build Rollins up. will be on separate brands after this draft. To be. They have to be. They have to be. Wow. And I think I think Fiend's going to remain on Raw, and Rollins is going to SmackDown. I mean, the crowd turned on him. They booed. They asked for refunds. They were chanting, AEW was the loudest chant of the night. Yeah. They AEW. closed the pay-per-view with that. That's crazy. Listen, that old conversation bummed me out. So, on that note. Oh, but you man. were the most fired up about it. Is everything going going good with you on your end? Come on. It's your birthday, PZ. Yeah, I mean, is the production good? Is everything good? Everything's I mean, fine. So All what right. are you bugging out about? Over I think there? we cut him off. Yeah, I'm not bugging out. What are, your, what are the four pillars, PZ? It brought me down. The whole, the but soul's... you were the most fired up. <laughs> I know, but what am I going to do now? They already fucked up. But what? It, everyone wants to know what your opinion is. Fuck I've been my saying opinion my is. opinion for like four weeks, bro. But they didn't go with it. So now what happens here? Well, you said well how are they going to book themselves out of a corner? Yeah. Well, I can tell you right now that you're the ultimate booker. Uh, well, I wouldn't go that far. No, if people listen to you, they'd go places. All right. Well, all right. Listen, <laughs> not the Scott though. <laughs> the Scott has proved worthless <laughs> since we started the game show. <laughs> ah, here we go. No. Um, Hold on. You, you want to prove me worthless out there? Just try to stub the Scott later on tonight. Eight six zero three eight four seven one one zero. Cat's already trying to plug his shit. <laughs> what I mean, how, how would you book yourself out of this corner? Listen, I mean, right now, what they've done with the referee ain't going to help. Uh, I All I did was take the heat off of Rollins. And put it on the Which ref. I don't, I don't believe they have actually done. They've just attempted to. Did you notice the referee like used like Seth Rollins' shoot name when he was like, don't use the sledgehammer. He's like, Colby, don't do it. I didn't pick that up, actually. And then he did it. I, uh, watch it back. He totally says his, his shoe Watch name. it back. Watch it back. <laughs> <laughs> That's one the Scott marks out real hard as voice cracks. <laughs> yeah, leave me alone. <laughs> Damn, yo. No, I don't know. They have a lot of work to do right now. I don't know how they're going to actually get themselves onto the, out of this corner because what they've done is back themselves so far into the corner that they've just become... One with the fucking wall, bro. They they <laughs> back themselves in the corner with everyone on the roster. It's that, yeah. Strap. Samoa yeah. Joe, MIA. Alistair Back, MIA. You know, Those promos, by the Kofi, way, are just terrible. Kofi, when... Kofi Kingston stomped on like a bug. I mean, K, uh, Brock Lesnar stomped on like a bug. Man. And if you ask me, the, they, they booked themselves in a corner so bad that it's obvious they're, they're setting the reset button with this draft that they didn't give a shit about Monday Night Raw. They've backed themselves in a corner so bad. The only two matches or feuds I am pumped up about are Tyson Fury and Braun Strowman and Cain Velasquez and Brock Lesnar. Which is what we're going to get to next after this break because right now I think we're all fired up. I'm really fucking high from this hash and weed combo. 
I'm going to take a break. I'm going to play some fucking shit for the audience. We're going to fucking mull this all over. I'm going to take a couple of, you know, drinks and we're going to move forward right here on the 2B Blunt Podcast. Scott, get him a water. I needed that break, guys. I got yeah. a little water. You're I good feel now. better. I'm all set up over here. I got my vape pen right here in front of me. The PZ's playing in the background. I got me all hot, fired up. You got your water, but I got a little bit of a little bit of the bubbly left. You got a little bit of the bubbly left. Oh, a little, bit of, left. Yeah, 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 oh. a little bit of the bubbly. So go to Knox. That's really right. A little bit. Well, we got to get right into it. We got big, big celebrities that have made their appearance, starting with SmackDown on Fox on Friday. Man. By the likes of Tyson Fury. And that led up to mm. Monday night. And we've seen a, all, a great segment that lasted 15 minutes. You're talking about the end of Raw? The end of Raw. Yeah. Which was yeah. great. It was. It was real good. It was the That was the best part of Raw. Absolutely. On Monday night. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Tyson Fury, the linear heavyweight champion who took out a Klitschko, who lost controversially to De- Deontay Weiler, who I'm a big fan of. Because his nickname is Bronx Bomber. And you, we, if you know me, I used to be Bronx Bomber for a long, long, long time. Oh, yeah. Representing the New York Yankees. And I mean, and then you see Kane Velasquez versus Brock Lesnar. And it's crazy because this Fox thing, they Fox now has deals with um, the boxing. Yep. UFC oh, and yeah. WWE. And they've tied it, they're starting it's to crazy. tie it all together. So now we have. Three major fighting wrestling brands, and yeah. they're tying it all together. And it's That's cool it. to see, dude. It is. It, it is. is. I jumped up when nuts. I saw Kane come out. I was like, holy shit. I mean, Kane Velasquez came out. And when we went out on, uh, what was it, Friday or Saturday night, me and PZ went to Legends of Fear. I was like, dude, I don't know what's going on with this. They're just going to throw this dude in, dude in green. He was like, dude, he, used, he, he tagged with Cody Rhodes and... In a tag match. With, yeah. In a six-man. Uh, in triple-A. Brian Cage was in there. as like yeah. Lucha, and he wore a mask. And the dude was phenomenal. Yeah, and he's been at the Who's performance that? center. Kane Velasquez. Velasquez. He's been at the performance center like within the last couple, well, maybe a year now. I don't know. At yeah, least that's the last what PZ told me. Yeah. He's like, dude, I heard he's been there for a year. And then he did that Lucha match. 
That's right. He did the AAA match. Yes, yeah, he did. And obviously, a lot of history between him and Lesnar, right? He's the guy that dethroned Lesnar for the UFC World Heavyweight title. Absolutely. Yeah. He knocked him out cold. Yeah. Yeah. And he took the UFC title from him. Yeah. Which is huge. Huge. You know? Put him back into retirement to the WWE, essentially. Essentially, yeah. That's exactly what's happened. I got to play And then we have Tyson Fury. I mean, boxing heavyweight champion. Fighting off against Braun Strowman. And his mantra for years is, get these hands. Yeah, and he was literally the biggest, like the biggest, like, athlete in WWE today. And he's seeing him and Tyson Fury square off in the middle of Monday Night Raw was just like... Breathtaking. These there was like two giants. No, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not Tyson Austin. It's not Big Show Floyd Mayweather, but it's up there. Oh, for sure. I mean, I wasn't a fan of uh, Mayweather and Big Show because personally, I'm not a fan of Mayweather. Okay, but oh, no. this Strowman Fury thing has me very intrigued. Yeah, I mean, well, listen, this is what they're we'll trying see. to do. They have the competition with AEW. Fox has a lot of you know connections that they never had before but do you think kane velasquez goes to crown jewel and beats brock lesnar see i think i think we'll get our answers tomorrow because uh, apparently 3 p.m eastern standard time uh on the wwe network there's going to be a press conference live in las vegas involving kane Th- that was another breaking news scott yeah. and las vegas <laughs> where where who usually holds their press conferences scott you're gonna say ufc yes <laughs> okay i'm not i wasn't i was asking you a question you wow. have to answer it. I'm wow. sorry. Wow. No wonder why you've been losing. What is UFC? You can't answer it. What is this, Jeopardy? <laughs> no wonder why he's been losing. He's been answering questions with questions. It's devastating. No wonder why. This is, you're right. You're right. You're right. But I, I really feel like this whole thing with them is so intriguing, but I'm also feeling like they're wasting these matches, putting them on Saudi Arabia, bro. Well, we'll see if it actually I agree. happens in Saudi Arabia. You know how but, much we hate the Saudi Arabia shows, the, the crown jewels. But, and the, but, why why but did that this, shit? This is the first one I may tune into with some enthusiasm because you got probably the one last leg drop and probably the one last figure four. And then you're going to have Velasquez, Lesnar. You, you, you think they're going to get physical? Part two, new sport. And, you know, I'm going to be tuning in. Halloween. We'll see what happens. But Saudi Arabia is where the money's at. I mean... All things put aside, if you're a worker, PZ, you're a worker. If you're going to get whatever, 500% more money than you usually get Which to go to Saudi Arabia. And a handshake. <laughs> All right, then let's say a million percent. <laughs> Which I'm well, very grateful for. WWE doesn't fuck this up like the NBA fucked it up in China. Oh, dude. That's a good point. That's a good point. He's right. He's right. I mean, the NBA lost on a lot of money, and a lot of players are going to be hurting. They're, the build-ups have been really good with Tyson and Braun. I'm already I, actually looking forward to that more than Kane and Brock right now. And when you talk about the celebrity value, apparently tomorrow night, you might put this as breaking news or whatever, but like there's going to be a ton of celebrities for this draft tomorrow night on SmackDown. Apparently, Troy Aikman's going to be there. Oh, yeah, I heard about there, that. There, there's a lot going on. There's a lot. Troy of, Aikman. Troy he, Aikman. He's the Staples Stone quarterback of the Simpsons. That's right. He's coming in to announce <laughs> one of the, the drafts. He's the voice of the game of the week on Fox. That's right. Well, speaking of game of the week, we're about to get into my match of the week. Oh. <laughs> That's right. PZ's Match of the Week Special Edition, the Birthday Edition. Here live on the Birthday Extravaganza. Woo! And I bet you're wondering what my Match of the Week is. There were a lot of matches this week. I'm curious to know. I've been doing this for a few weeks now, and every time it's been from NXT. So you'll be surprised to hear that it is different this week. Wow, that's right. I, I, did, I did pick up on that. That's right. So this week, it doesn't come from NXT. Oh. It doesn't come from Raw. It doesn't come from Hell in a Cell. Of course not. It doesn't even come from SmackDown on Fox. Wow. That's right. My match of the week took place last night 
on TNT <laughs> for AEW Dynamite. I have crossed over this week. Young Bucks versus Private Party was a spectacular match. Oh, wow. That's right. Baby. They were killing it. That was well, a great match. The moves, it didn't matter. But listen, didn't have the psychology that Kushida and Walter had. No. But the crowd was electric. Ooh. Everybody's fired up. Man, that was great. They were hitting all their moves, all the gimmicks. And that fucking Hurricane Rana into the cutter, so nasty. So nasty. You know, and a surprising finish where Private Party went over. Young Dude. Bucks giving them the rub. I would kind of have been happier, man. Yeah, it was an upset of surprise, but honestly, it was the right thing to do. I think so. I, I mean, I texted you. Got to build new talent. I yeah. you, said, you did. You did. I was like, PZ. Are you watching Private Party? <laughs> Tear it up right now. I, I wasn't, because, but I tuned in. Woo! Because was, oh, yeah. was put in the work to get this podcast together, and we thank him for that. That's right. But, man. That match it, was it just, That was it, Matt. And speaking of AEW, I'm sure everybody listening is surprised to hear how, I don't know, excited Frank Knox was when I mentioned it was AEW. Because for the past two weeks... Since Dynamite started, or actually one week, I should say, and up until that show, Frank Knox has been anti AEW, just like me. Man, I loved every fucking minute of AEW last night. It's good. From it's... Private Party and the Young Bucks to Darby Al- Allen and Jimmy Havoc to the big tag match at the end to the most epic promo I've heard in. Oh, years Jericho by La Champion. Oh, Le, Cha- <laughs> Le Champion, man. I mean, AEW top to bottom last night, man. They had a good, they had a good card. <sighs> that tag woman's match was the only low spot, but that was still in the B range. Uh, so, if you're gonna pick between the two, your top was obviously AEW for this week. AEW by a landslide. Scott, did you check out both shows? I did check out both shows. Okay. And, what are your uh, thoughts? I, I, what, are you, what is your favorite? Let's start there. I would say it was it was AEW. All right. All right. It all right. Was. Now tell me why. So, like, here's the thing. If, if you... Tell me why. Uh, uh, <laughs> ain't nothing but a heartbreak. <laughs> tell me why. Ain't nothing. Okay. We're stopping that. All right. That's right. So, anyway. <laughs> Poor um, Scott. I challenge our listeners, go back, watch both shows. Look at the crowd during both shows. Because on AEW, they are on their feet, camera side, the entire time. But that brings back to your point last week, Scott. NXT Full Sail. That's the thing. So NXT Full Sail, right, they're spoiled, right? They get the, they get the awesome matches. They get them every There's week. There's only so many it's, people It's become in complacent Florida. for them. Yeah, no, All right, yeah. so this is where I'm going to get to a point. And I'm glad you brought this up, Scott. Of perception versus reality. Who are you, Vince McMahon? That's right. Listen. Perception versus all right? reality. This is the thing. The reality of it is that uh, <laughs> the reality of it is is that NXT, in my opinion, put out a better wrestling show, better matches. You think this week? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. So yeah. What? I think there was more psychology to it. And I, I, um, I, I said that last week, but I don't know about this I don't week. think. Okay, I listen. That's fine. Your match of the week. Well. Your match of the week was on the other show. I know, but that doesn't that mean anything. Well. Okay. The overall gist of it, I got a lot more psychology out of NXT as a total show than I did watching AW, which is still to me kind of like a spot fest. So you didn't right. watch the. Not old, that I don't enjoy it, but if. Listen, but here's what I'm. Let Did me you finish watch my Omega point. And Spears. Yes. All right. Yes. You that saw was. No yeah. That was not. No. 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 That was. That was. That was a good match. But overall, I'm saying, to me, it was a lot of it was like you know spots, and then the, the Darby Allen with the skateboard thing to me was kind of corny. That wasn't. That's just not my bag. Which is fine. Everybody's got their own thing. All right. Crap popped hard for that though. They did. They they liked it. But listen. But here's the thing. But the perception is that when you change the channel and you look at AEW. They have 10,000 seat arena. They have fucking, you know, 8,000 fans in the building. Yeah. The lights, the fucking pyros, everything. And you compare it to watching NXT at full sale. And and it's literally, it was like, <laughs> I had to literally tell myself, why am I switching back? And not to mention, it was very weird that every time I would cut back <laughs> to NXT, it was on commercial. Yeah, well, when, when AEW is on commercial, NXT is on commercial. And I'm pretty sure that's strategic. Yeah, but it was, oh, it was they, fucked they, up, they bro. Didn't because do, they didn't do it the first week, though. No, dude, I was pissed off, dude. I couldn't because like, I kept trying to switch back and forth, so I ended up watching mostly AEW. 
And I didn't really catch NXT till after and then the rest <laughs> of it today when I got home. So, but well, I think that the, the matches were better, but the perception, the reality is that they have a better wrestling show, but the perception is the AEW is just more grand. And then at the end of the day, what's, what's going to be... What's gonna be what captures the fans more? You know, the yeah. big, the big, the big fight feel, or the ECW gimmick? You know, it's tough. It's a tough. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. What's, but what's the ECW gimmick? Because it's kind of like a better produced ECW show, if you ask me. It's very dark. It's but, very gritty. But the full sale crowds like the ECW crowd. Kind of that's small. also yeah yeah. But AEW has no one. No one even knows today what the rules are. That, well, that's because they have a big issue with that because all they do is break the rules and they're very loose with them yeah, the whole I, show. And that's another problem for a company that's like, we're going to be more on the sports side. Wins and losses are going to matter. I mentioned this last week and then they go off and these rules are so lenient. The refs just let anything fly. I was going to say, well, Tully was interfering in that match. Oh, it was def- right? I mean, and, you could have... I was trying to like look. I was like, oh, does the referee see him? And you know. I think he did. <laughs> but the bottom line is, is that we got the ratings in for this week. Yeah. NXT drops 100,000. Uh, AEW dropped almost four. Three and change, you know, 100,000. Which I think is expected, but still, that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's expected, but yes, that, that's... that's uh, that there just. Go, man, if everyone <laughs> wants to know what we're laughing at, I told PJ I got to pee before I dropped my top five. <laughs> Listen, Dude. I got to pee after you, man, because, like... Oh, my God. You got a bunch of jabronis here. Well, this I'm, is the I'm drinking PC. a lot of water right now. That's <laughs> right. That's fine. I'm just going to run into some PZ Johns then. Let's you run know? into a PZ. We twisting fat Johns. Eyes, they're so red, hiding from the pigs. <laughs> we twisted fat Johns, uh, fat Johns. I mean, we've literally already hit the um, the point here where we've... I think we're almost ready to take a break anyways, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean we, we talked about a lot of stuff already. We are. We so I'll are. tell you what. I'm going to run some shit. Me and the crew, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna you're gonna play hear some classic peasy, something you probably have never heard before. If you haven't, I hope you enjoy it. If you don't, I don't give a shit. I'll see you back after break live on the Two B Blunt Podcast.
But we gotta get we gotta get this the show moving. That's along. right. You know what time it is, don't you? I know what time it is. It's morphin' time. Frank Knox top five. 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 Frank Knox Top 5 Frank Knox Top 5 That's right, the Frank Knox Top 5, baby Frank, let him know what we got this week Scott, call him out Call him out, man Number 5 You can get these hands Braun Strowman Oh, number 4 A little bit of bubbly La champion Chris Jericho Number 3 Brock Lesnar. Number two. Can you smell? Oh! What the rock is cooking? And your Frank Knox, number one. Traffic. Oh, <laughs> Lance, it's me, the man, <laughs> Becky Lynch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right, lads. I had to switch it up. I had to give a little impression of each, each member of my top five. Some Irishness in there. I mean, oh I went down God, from yo. number five oh. to number one. I gave you a little snippet. Belly laughing so much, my belly hurts yeah. legit. But I mean, dude, for me, the rock in that Becky Lynch segment was like. Yeah, you were really put it over. That the, was fire. That was the best thing I see on TV. As I, two, two times I jumped out of my seat that night was Kane and when the rock came out. Wow. Kane and The Rock. I wasn't a fan of the Kane. <laughs> I mean, the rock, rock, I, the rock, I might have jumped a little the higher. Rock. <laughs> the Rock was just great, dude. And him and Becky Lesnar had this, like, chemistry. Like, they worked in the Did ring. Did you say Becky Lesnar? 
I think Becky he Lynch. did, yo. <laughs> Becky Lynch. Well, we smoked it. You know, we got another hash punk going. I've been carrying your drunk ass the whole show. <laughs> That's right, Scott. Everyone's carrying your drunk ass. Uh, I thought you had a solid f- top five, Frank. We saw Jericho in there who had a great week. Dude, the you know? best promo I saw on TV in a long time. It was a great week. When he said that We the People was dead and it was bad creative and it was over. Devastating. And to stop chanting it, it, it was just That's like, the great thing about promos not being scripted. Yeah, and he said like, like bullet points. Yeah, and WWE doesn't do that anymore. If there's a chant that's against them, they True. just let it die out. AEW, they're like, oh, you want to say, all right, we're going to respond to the crowd. And what does that do to start the show? That only gets Not the much. crowd hotter <laughs> for the rest of the show. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Absolutely. When you come through and you work with the crowd, that gets them to pop the next time and the next time. But WWE, they just want to they let all those chants fade out. I mean, how many years we heard CM Punk? Oh, my God. No so one's many. ever Too mentioned many. them. You know? So many. And if they responded once... They would have had the crowd hooked. Yeah, they could have, but they failed, yo. They failed. You know? They could have restarted the match on Sunday. Yeah. And they they could have. There and then four we made, officials outside the ring. You know, I, I mean, they had to have done something other than what they did. Devastating. But otherwise, I think that your top five was great this week, dude. Great. Great. I loved it. I loved it. So I God, hope. What do you think? I think it's great, man. The man on top. The man, but the top. man, the man did get pinned this week. That doesn't matter to me, man. She For worked, the first time in a long time, she worked with the great one on Friday night. Okay, that's all that matters to you. All right, that's why he's number two. I mean, he's right I mean, though. That promo, dude, it was like they worked together forever, man. Like she finished his puns, he finished her puns. I mean, it was fire. And Baron Corbin took it like a champ. That's right. They read I mean, each other like a not, book, not like a champ, like a king. Oh wow! Nah, Corbin was great, man. I, if you take me back to like Raw reunion when uh, they had all the the old timers there and Austin was there, I thought for sure Corbin was going to cut out, come out, come a, cut a promo, and Austin was going to stun him. But it didn't happen. But that's right. he did he did the job to the Rock this past Friday, and it was great. <laughs> that was better than coming out for Stone Cold. Man. <laughs> I mean, the Rock he is the epiphany of Friday Night SmackDown. Thursday night point. SmackDown. Tuesday night SmackDown. It don't matter what whatever day of the week. Because The Rock layeth the, the Smackdown. Smackdown. That's right, damn I'm it. your candy ass. He's the highest paid Hollywood actor yeah. of the year. Like, I mean, come on. He's gonna, and why do you think that is? Because he's eating that poontang pie. What? You know, he's going to work. He's doing what The Rock it's is doing. not cooking. where I thought this was going. You know, he's doing everything the people want because he is. The people's champion. He's the people's champion. He's, He's a blockbuster not a movie star. He's an Anawahe. 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 And he's the star of one of my favorite shows, Ballers, on oh. HBO. I don't have HBO, so I can't relate. <laughs> Just boot like that shit, bro. <laughs> Shout out to Spencer Strassmore. That's right. <laughs> keep, pop, keep popping them beans. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. Frank Knox top five, though, this week. We got a lot more to get into still. We got to get into a little stump to Scott. Dude, I can't wait. We, we got, got a lot more. We it's got late. the questions. It's late already. We got the questions. I mean, oh I sent PZ a ton. He did. He I did. Sent he said a, a ton. ton. Enough for uh, a couple, probably the rest of the month. He said it. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> the rest of the month. Oh, my God. I hope you're ready, Scott. We're going to take a quick break. I don't know. We're going to come we'll back, and we're going to play Stump the Scott. Go on to play Stump the Sky, 860-384-7110. Here's some more obscure PC tracks for your listening pleasures. Fire PC tracks. Obscure. Fire. I knew about trapping in the street Fuck a 10 to 20 bag, I'm some more is what I seen Call me Dope Boy Fresh, that's the name that I chose You can call me Peasy Boy, that's the name that I go by Rip, cause I'm so high, leaning in my mouth dry Still I stay splitting, not tipping when I drive by Whoa, now I know it's starting to get a little hot All this fire I'm breathing, burning your number one spot Like a hole in the backseat, running like a track Me, you said that I was shit, you're still dissing on the tracks Geo hard, then you shouldn't have to show that you're better You're just driving 
up my apple sales, providing me with cheddar. Y'all the number one fans for the number one draft pick. The eight ball I'm hitting with the end of my cue stick. The next time you wanna put commercial records out, don't be talking about the shit that you never been about. He swang he swang he trapping like a trapping, he spitting like a spitting, he hard as I is. He ballin', he ballin', he smoking like a smoking, he leaning like I'm leaning, he hard as I is. Say you steady tip, tipping while I'm steady flip, flipping on the corner of your screen, man, you ain't hard as I is. I'm saying, I'm saying, you plain, you plain, that you hard as I is, but you ain't. He's the smartest. You don't have any brains. I'm from Hollywood. I have the brains. He's unstoppable. Nobody in the whole world can beat me one-on-one -on -one right now. It's the hottest game show around. It's Stump the Scott. And now, your host, Bud Griffin. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Stump the Scott. We're here live with the Scott, who claims to be the smartest wrestling trivia man alive. That's right, bud. Good to see you. Nice to see you again, Scott. You got my co-host, Frank Knox, here. Yes, sir. We're going to give you questions. You know the rules. You got 30 seconds to answer. Once the buzzer goes off, we need your final answer. And at that point, you will find out if you are correct or you have been stumped. Okay. His, his, his uh, podcast record right now. Including Steve Credo is 0 for 3. 0 for 3. 0 for 3. That's devastating. You've had to lose no, no, record. No. I thought we disputed that. And I thought we disputed... Oh, well, no. We, we did no, dispute no, We no. did dispute the, the, um, the Steve the Credo. Steve Credo, one. yeah. If you're listening yeah, to Steve yeah, Credo, yeah, call yeah, in. Yeah, so one and two. One two. One you're two. still under 500. That's and uh, <laughs> last week... No, no. No, no. We, we no, said no, no, we no, talked no, about no, this with Bud after the show. No, no. Before we started, though, you talked about... You said you said a match at Judgment Day 2014, Frank Knox. And guess what? There was not a judgment day in 2014. It didn't happen. So uh, I don't know if you're trying to... been in extreme rules and are, upon further review. Extreme rules? Really? Guys, I guys, think it was extreme guys, rules. guys. 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 Right, anyway. You got guys. It wrong. You're, you're anyway, you're let's keep two. the show going. Fellas. Are you ready to stop the sky? That's right, Scott. Are you ready for your first question? was the first ever WWE Cruiserweight Champion after the WWF was renamed to WWE. I repeat, who was the first ever WWE Cruiserweight Champion after the WWF was renamed to WWE? 30 seconds on the clock, and your time starts now. All right, so I have 30 seconds. I'm going to talk this one out. Um, I feel like, like first you comes do. to mind is Jamie Noble. Um, but... Uh, after WWF, WWE, because when it was WWF, it was still light heavyweight championship, and that was like Jerry Hardy and Jerry Lynn, and then, damn, WWE, did they have a tournament? I don't even remember. Jamie Noble is like the first name that comes to my mind. 30 seconds are up. Scott, what is your final answer? So you see, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if this is going to be right, but I kind of have to go with Jamie Noble. <laughs> uh, Scott, if you give me like five more minutes Sorry Scott The answer to that question was none other than the Hurricane Hell ah. Are you ready for question number two Brought to you by Frank Knox The leader in the Hard Knocks Hello I'm Scott a, I'll take that Hi. as a yes What tag team won the match In the main event of January 28th, 2006 edition of Velocity. Uh, wh what? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, repeat the question? <laughs> right. That was a little too hard. Wow. No, right. repeat it. I'm going to see if I get it. tag team won the tag team match in the main event of the January <laughs> He's already got it queued. 2006 edition of Velocity. All right, January 28th, 2006. 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. It was a tag team main event. Tag team main event. Can 
never going to get this. Scott, would you like a, would you like a lifeline on this question? <laughs> <laughs> I really want to say Paul London was one of those guys, but it's not. Um, Scott, I will let you know that Paul London and ba- Brian Kendrick were their opponents. Oh, uh, I might have it. Wow. Well, he we got uh, the first ever lifeline here. Scott. Lifeline. Well, he yeah, gave you a hit. Uh, that was a hit. Okay. I'll take it as that so, as a hit. So, Scott. I, I mean, I'm not sure, but you said January 28, 2006. So I'm trying to think of that error. He even gave you the opponent. And you I said it was the, the main opponents. event. And you said, so the, the, the opponent. So, your were, final the, answer. The opponents were. All right. Paul so London and Brian Kendrick. The opponents were Paul London and Brian Kendrick. So, I'm going to, I'm not sure, but I'm going to go with Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch. Oh my God! Oh, Let me try again. Eminem, Joy Mercury, and John Scott, Morrison. Again, man. I have you know you mentioned Jamie Noble, and I had to pull up a question where he was the answer, and that's none other than Jamie Noble and Kid Cash. Dude, like, how do you expect me to get that? Well, are you in a Scott or not? Okay, Scott. Looks like you're having trouble here, so we're gonna take it to the bonus easy round right here on the Jimmy Butt Podcast. To make sure the Scott maybe won't get stumped right here. Let's go stop the Scott. I love it when the easy round comes around. Scott, question number three. <laughs> Who did Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestle at the 1998 edition of Over the Edge? I repeat, who did Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestle at the 1998 edition of Over the Edge? 30 seconds on the clock. And your time starts right now. I got I got this, and uh, you know what? We got 30 seconds to talk oh, about this. Oh, oh, my God. No, 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 no. Ready, ready, ready. I want to tell you. No, shut up, Knox. I'm going to tell you. Oh, wow. wow. I'm going to Scott. The referee of the match was Vince McMahon. All right. We had uh, Briscoe and Patterson were somewhere around ringside. The opponent was Dude Love. Frank, do you think he's right? You can cut the time. I, I would hope so. It's new love. There it is. The Scott is correct. If you have a question or you want to try to stuff the Scott, call right in here. 860-384-7110. Frank, do we have time for one more question? I mean, we have, we have to have time for two more questions. Two more questions. See if Scott can go below, above 500. So, Scott, question number Three. Or is it four? This is number four, actually, yeah. So they're one and two. All right, so number four. Which is not a former ring identity of The Undertaker? The Punisher, Mean Mark, Master of Pain, or Unabomb? Repeat the question one more time. Um, no, it's all right. He doesn't even have to repeat it. It's okay. Uh, because okay. He, 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts right now. Like, I would repeat all those again, but you said, uh, what is a former moniker of The Undertaker, correct? That was correct. the question? That was okay. the question. So the last one that he said, Unabom. No, you don't have to say it. It's all right. Because I know Unabom <laughs> is wow. not Undertaker. Unabom was Kane. Well, in USWA. Scott, it's got to be Scott. It's got to be Scott. He's correct. So PC, wow, Scott, you are now two for two. Well, bud, he's uh, two wins, two losses. I think you got to hit him with the fifth and final tiebreaker where the Scott could finally pass through. Uh, Scott, are you ready for your fifth question? Maybe. I don't know. Perhaps. Well, let's get ready to find out if I can stop the sky. Wow, that was really good. <laughs> All right, Scott. Who helped Taz win the ECW heavyweight title from Mike Awesome? You said who held him? Who helped Taz? Oh, helped. Helped. Okay. Who helped Taz? Win the ECW heavyweight title from Mike Awesome on April 13th, th- <clears throat> April 13th, 2000. Who helped Taz win the ECW heavyweight title from Mike Awesome? He's got an answer written down. On April 13th, 2000. 30 seconds on the clock. You, I think you're going to need it right here. Time starts right. now. I'm pretty sure I got this. Uh, I'm going to talk about how historic this was for a second, though. This is the first time ever a WWE contracted wrestler 
fought a WCW contracted wrestler for the ECW championship wow. at an ECW show. And Taz did win that match. And who helped him? I'm going to go with the innovator of violence, Tommy Dreamer, baby. That's right. This guy is going home today. I can't believe it, Scott. Dude, this is a history right here. The Scott has won an episode of Stump the Scott. It's his first time. Congratulations, Scott. And your prize today is going to be no other than some secondhand smoke. Oh, <laughs> baby, let's go. <laughs> Oh boy! Smoke it! Looks like his head's coming up on the ring. If you're not watching on Facebook Live, I'm inhaling like gold dust right now. Oh! <laughs> My God, yo! There's still so much more in the show, it. bro. Smell it. There's still so. If you smell, <laughs> what's a Scott? It's cooking. That's right. And we're here at the To Be Blood podcast. Frank just relit the blood again. <laughs> well, I had to give Scott the Scott his prize. You know? Look at him. He's carving out the lock. Someone get an inhaler. Oh, and my it's God. Got asthma. It's all over. It's all over. Throw you know? Ice. Man. We just, it's my birthday. We've got, we got real lit today. So, Peasy, I mean, it's your birthday. You started, I think you started the show off. With the possibility of going to the gym. Yeah. So and I don't think I said that on the is, air, though. You did. Is that still yeah, happening? Yeah, you did. <laughs> That's how high you are. You said that at like 6.15 Eastern Standard Time. Yes. E-S-T, my man. Listen. It's not out the question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Man, my man. I, day, I wouldn't. I don't know. It's no. your birthday, man. You deserve a day off. I took a day off yesterday. You deserve a cheese pizza. Damn, that sounds fire right now. A little cheese. A little you cheese. You deserve a piece, cheese a pizza. cheese. Man, my birthday. <laughs> Damn, yo. So, here we go. We, just, we did a lot of crazy shit today. I mean, yeah, man. We heard PZ tracks. I mean, I can't believe nobody called in. I don't know. Come on. On the birthday edition. I mean, nobody called in. You don't want to wish PZ happy birthday out there? Come on. This is some bullshit. Not no, even, not no, even listen, moonshine. Come they're, on. They're wishing me happy birthday on the Facebook. You know? That's because you're too busy man in the Facebook. Oh, no one's called. They're not man in the calls. Dude, they're nobody not, is called. Because you're man in the Facebook. That's not true. I tell people to call in right on the Facebook. There must be a technical error here. Yeah, there's huh. got to be some service I'm error. I'm telling you. But, you know, <sighs> just it's been a long, crazy year. We're here, at episode sixteen. Another year. Another <laughs> another year. And now we're doing this shit. That's it. We did a lot of years as 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 the um, you know the the rapper gimmick. We played a little of the rocker gimmick. You played the rapper. I mean, it all started off the wrestler gimmick. That's true, Jerry Poop. Yeah, the wrestler. Yeah, the backyard turn gimmick. rapper. Yeah, turn into a rapper. Turn rocker. Turn to, back into a rapper. <laughs> exactly. And then into a wrestler. Exactly. <laughs> The and then to the host of the Two Be Blood podcast. Yeah, but you've you've always been a mastermind. I mean, of all, our, you know, you're an artist. That's it. I'm an artiste. I'm the champion. You're not champion. My own rights, you know. So, dude, I mean, what's what's like? Uh, like, I've done a lot of shit. What's your favorite song, yo? Got a favorite? You got a favorite Peasy song? If you got a fa- if you're listening, you got a favorite Peasy song? I can't even talk, yo. The hash got me fucked. One of my fucked favorite, one of my favorite Peasy songs. Don't let it be you, boy. You gonna catch one in your mouth. <laughs> no way, no how, bro. Yo, that brought oh me, my yeah, god, that was, that was one of the, my faves, man. Dude, sure. that was that's a fire track, dude. We got, we got real gangster on that shit. Yeah, that's we got a real shit. gangster on that shit you for no catch reason. One in your mouth, blow. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally how it went. Don't let it be me, boy, or you gonna catch one in your mouth. No shit, Scott, for real. Now be me, boy. No way, no. Blah. Blah. <laughs> Yo. Now be me, boy. 
so true. I got connects with the hookup, states that are booked up, haters that are shook up, and homies that are crooked up. See, I'm a struggle for cash, don't even think about it. If you be touching my stash, you better be about it. I'm selling halves on the block, cause it's on the block. Bought a quap, but it's sold to them re upped on my stock. Cause I'm a hustler, homie. Why you selling dime bags? I'm selling keys to the Tony. And all the shit that you be talking, I'm doing it more. You in your room talking, this is that shit right here. I love this shit. God, this is some gangster shit. I've been missing out on the peasy over the years, but if you ask me my favorite track, what's come to mind is that Charlie Sheen right now. Oh, the Charlie Sheen. So we going from keys of the Tony to keys of the Charlie. Good transition, Scott. Oh my god. I don't even know what fucking album I was off of. Oh, <laughs> He's trying to do a search engine right now for us. <laughs> I'm not even like searching. I'm just trying to think. I'm so high. You might have to do it in freestyle. That was right after the, maybe the, uh, <laughs> we should know the this. album you did with James Flanders <laughs> as the intro. Global Warning? Well, I think that was Global Warning, no? If I had a guess, I'd say Global You're right. Warning. You're right. Wow, you're right, yo. Yeah, right I, mean, right I know my PZ lyrics, her, but I know my PZ album. It's a little bit higher than the rest of y'all. Because I got that? something the rest of y'all ain't got. That's that Charlie Sheen. 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 Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. They love it. We be higher on that Charlie Sheen. 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 We be higher on that Charlie Sheen. That Charlie Sheen. That Charlie Sheen. That's that shit, y'all. That's how it's shit. I'm saying, there's so many songs. You know, Dude, the gonna... album is, the, the collection is deep. No, the collection is real deep, bro. I mean, you should honestly play, if you had it, I know people listening would, you know, go crazy. It's what is it? The Crew. No, bro. I mean, I, if you play a snippet <laughs> of it, I know people that are listening would go crazy. There's no one listening that would go I, crazy. I know three people that would be listening that would go really? crazy for it. Yeah, man. I mean, that's like the that's the beginning, right? Oh, man. Isn't that the beginning of PZ as we know it? I know you got it. Yeah, it's all about the crew. We some whack ass motherfuckers. You know the business. Wow, yo. the clubs. All the day on this. Let's hear it. No, we start with it's your man. Watch it. Crew. I already stopped it. Oh, oh I'm sorry. On, Dude, I'm not going to play it again now. I've already turned it off. Man, that was like the beginning of, you know? That was great. You pulled it up. I appreciate that. I'm sorry. I didn't even think about it because the, the hook is fire. The In this is, crew, yeah. we'll kill you. Yeah. We running it. Uh-huh. I don't forget the fucking last line. Oh. <laughs> Damn, yo. I remember his own lyrics. Like, yo, you shot <laughs> everyone in the hood, though. <laughs> what? You sh- yeah, you shot all your hood in this song, man. It's the crew. This is true. No, you're right. You're right. We did. <laughs> you know, you we shout did. out, you know, GP, Johnny D, Joey D. If that's the, the case, I know some people listening who would appreciate this then. Yeah. Oh, shit. Man. It's going down. Margarito <laughs> Carnival. Oh. Get out the way. Get the fuck out the way, bitch. Woo, <laughs> 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 Get out the motherfucking way. Wait a minute, how stoned are you? I'll tell you right now, this is that shit, Scott. We just... I saw stone, 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 hit the motherfucking block, yeah, bet it hit. Dude, that's, I mean, we got some classic Yo, shit, bro. Yo, Sloppy J-O-E killed that, though. That, like, he, that was, that was, like, yeah, I mean. Smoke a lot. Yo, I'm just, yeah, yeah. when you see me, you know you want to be me. Cause I'm straight chilling, yo, I'm so damn stoned. Yo, I smoked the Project P, man, I'm glad I'm home. Cause, yo, I'm home from college where I learned a lot. Fuck that, man, now no, I'm home to smoke a lot. Yo, I'm chilling here on the corner. 
corner of the road. Got Project P rolls up with his phone. Cause he's chillin' and he's got the caddy lack. Yo, I'm sitting in the back, yo, the caddy lack. Yo, still it, got the stone flow. Hit it with the verse P or with the chorus, yo. That's how we do, yo. It's just a right there. Hit him up, man. Show him what you got. <laughs> The introduction, boy. Ooh. If you try to pee back in the lack yeah. in town, A60. And if you want to come see me in the streets, I'm going to show you where I be. <laughs> I'm going to show you where I be. And you don't want to fuck with me. I got a 12 gauge. I put it in the head. Dude, I'll tell you what, right now, we definitely have a three in front of our, our age. Dude. We're like ones and low twos. Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. On the day to day grinding, what you know about man, like, oh, really what you it. know about bitches, all bitches in a word here. There we yeah. go. Joey D, he comes on some weird ass shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you pack enough bubbler, better use fresh water. Coming, coming through, sloppy Joe got the solder. I got them engines, I got them cavaliers. I'm straight holding it down, you can hear me with your ears. Yo, you got the senses of hearing and smell, but you lost your voice because you smoke too much well. Yo, cause you smoke, you smoke that good green. Holding it down, sloppy Joe got the finest. Yo, coming through, man, I got your highness. DJ Franchise in the passenger seat. Passenger, passenger, pass me a new beat. Beat. Sloppy Joe coming through with my gangster hood. Southside Middle Town, you always knew we would. Rep those streets, man, chilling with the cheese. Got them gangster good ass trees. Sloppy Joe GPS, what you really know? No, number one draft picks, man. Bouncing, oh yeah. my god, Yo, bro. That, that verse right there, bro. Go down history. Top <laughs> verses all time for me, dude. <laughs> Tell you felt it. Top verses. If you don't play that, you're a wedding, bro. I'm not He's like literally oh and, and like if you like if you if I could like describe this kid to you, like he's no, like, he's the band. He's he's the band. Like, yeah. like, for him to come out and just start spitting these freestyles, bro. <laughs> the best, dude. Always. The best. The, the best. best. But there's just so many, so many things that we could be, you know, doing here. There's so Walking many tracks. Down memory lane, I know. Dude. What we need to do is we need to put together like a like a best of, bro. Of all that shit, it needs to happen. We need a best of of you, a best of, of, of the whole, everything. That's man. it, the everything, one hundred percent. Just like they used to do back in the day with the now. The, now this is what I call music. You know, them fucking compilation gimmicks. <laughs> to- totally 80s. Totally 80s, yeah. bro. Something like that. That's what I need. We just need something called Totally Peasy, and I think we'd be all set. Hey, what do you think these songs have in common? I ride, I'm smoking on big bucks. Neck goes because I know how to stuck. I'm driving, I'm leaning to the bag. And you could bet that, and you could bet that. Give up? They're from the masterful collection of the crunkest yeah, hits from your Get High Rapper, Peasy. That's right. 40 awesome songs for you to get fucked up to on a two-disc CD or cassettes. Including such hits as That Charlie Sheen. 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 These boys be getting high, but we be higher on that Charlie Sheen. 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 These boys be getting high, but we be higher on that Charlie Sheen. back. I know y'all people been waiting, I'm back, so fuck all y'all hating because you can up the buck, but you won't blow me down. You can up the buck, but you won't blow me down. I know it seems unbelievable, but trust me, if you can think of it, we got it on this exclusive collection. Don't forget the first ever hit single from PZ himself, Trap Star. Back on the block, look at me, I'm a trap star. Hurt by the pound, look at me, I'm a trap star. Like purple. What you on? 
It's feeling like a drought. You need some money in your pockets, I can help you out. Oh, you got mouth to feed, I'm who you call upon. Just come and see the best, and I'ma put you on. The fun doesn't end there. We even bring you such classics as Get Low. Get your girl, let me see it. Get low, get low. Get your money, let me see it. Get low, get low. Get your weed, let me see it. Get low, get low. Get your drink, let me see it. Get low. Who could forget? No way, no how. Send check her money order to get your collection of crunk music from PZ. Two CDs, $24.99. Two cassettes, $19.99. Order today. It's the best podcast around to be blunt with PZ. Be the greatest album of all time, yo. It would literally be the greatest album of all time. Maybe it's time to re- you know release the uh, To Be Blunt podcast soundtrack. That's right. Produced by none other than DJ Franchise, a.k.a. The Pontiff, a.k.a. DJ Pooh. <laughs> Don't forget to tune in next week, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, To Be Blunt podcast, number two. Be Blunt Podcast. That's where you can find us on all social media. Make sure you guys leave a review for us on the show today. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you're not already. And uh, from if you want to submit any question for the Scott, try right. in your opinion after the show. Right on the Facebook on if you the want. Facebook, right, the Twitter, I'm the Instagram, you. or you want to submit your submission to be the follow up of the trash we had last week and oh, gas trash. Oh no! Then be our guest. No, oh, I guess that's it. Be our guest, he said. Well, next week we'll be back, episode 17, from Frank Knox, the Scott, and your host, PZ. I'm about to continue the birthday bash, baby. It's the 2B Blunt Podcast. Woo!